What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Series E Apex Legends. It's our first pro night of the season as we kick off Season 4 of Series E this week. My name is Yeso. I'll be your host here tonight. As always, super excited to be joining you guys once again. We had an incredible night last night with Open Night and saw Team Vizio with a record-setting performance, and they'll look to carry momentum from that showing here into tonight, where Obviously, the competition will be much tougher. We'll have all of our partnered squads competing against some of the best pro teams from all across North America. So it promises to be a very exciting and fun night with six games ahead of us here. Now, if you are new to what we're doing here at Series E, I can break things down for you, okay? Series E is a professional Apex Legends open circuit, at least here tonight, but we do also have Guilty Gear in the mix. We have a range of players that made it into Series E by either playing in our open qualifiers or by finishing at the top of Series E last season. Now, all of those teams have been drafted and signed by all of our partner brands, and now they compete weekly for points and prize money every Tuesday against other open squads, just like they used to be themselves, and then every single Wednesday against some of the best pros in the country. All these players make $750 a month salary and get to compete all the time so it's an awesome opportunity if you want to get in on the fun make sure to head over to matcherino.com forward slash esa for a shot at being a future series e pro now i mentioned it before team vizio kicked off intel week which is what we have here this week uh with an impressive performance 119 points for them in last night's showing which is the best performance we have seen from a partner and squad on a night here in Series E since Season 1, where we saw Team Razor eclipse that 120-point mark. Even Team Intel from last season weren't able to get that close as their best performance was 113 points. So Vizio absolutely crushed it. They won four of the six games, specifically winning the final three in a row, and all three players showed up big time. You may recognize this team, if you missed last night, uh, from the past couple of seasons. Phonyhead and Fury are back, but with a new third, they have Scissors now in filling that third role. And each player had their shining moments last night, had their carry performances, and now we'll have to see, can they do it again here? Obviously, this is a very talented squad with a ton of experience, and they've been competing against some of the best in North America in the ALGS Pro League, but it will certainly be a tough test here tonight. We're going to have incredible squads. TSM's going to be here, here, obviously, with their newly minted third, Verholst, playing with them. We're going to see complexity clg team liquid and more it's going to be a very very fun night of action and i'm certainly looking forward to it make sure to stick around here all night i'll be in here between games breaking down stats talking about everything that's going on and kind of keeping you guys up to date with everything that we have going on here but we're ready to get into the action six games tonight some of the best squads you will ever see in apex let's get into it Series E. Series E. Series E. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Series E. Apex Legends starts right now. And now we're seeing once again just like Game 2 slow down, but Fury time and time again, and she's it. They think they're winning it. Chances are they're winning it. So it gets thirsted by Zara Tricky as Hakula is going to come around the corner with the spray, and now it's just one player alive over here, and this was. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one, welcome all to the very first pro night of Series E Season 4. My name is Dia, and I am joined by the legend himself, T-Squared, as he hits the mic once again in Season 4. Now, I am super excited to see the insight that you bring here, T-Squared, because on our pro night, we have so many high-caliber teams joining us, a lot of which will be going into playoffs, and even with some of our own teams here, the partnered squads going into playoffs themselves over in ALGS Pro League, I'm expecting this to be a night of high action and high intensity apex legends definitely especially because of the fact that we have the playoffs coming around the corner and you're gonna have some teams that have qualified and you're gonna have some teams that didn't and we just changed the format from having a land where there was only going to be 10 teams in each region going forward and now that it's expanded to 20 and they've separated the regions so that's really great for the teams that were on the outside looking in teams like team liquid etc and we're going to see those teams here today 
Yeah, I, th there are some really big uh, st story points that I want to touch on here as well. I mean, Yeso pointed out that Vizio, of course, managed to clutch up the three wins at the end yesterday, four in total. But there's another squad that managed to do that pretty darn recently. They're going to be joining us here today. Hunter Thieves on a big upswing at the end of their season are a squad that I really want to look out for to see if they can continue that momentum forward as other teams try and build up some of their own ap approaching the playoffs that we're talking about and, of course, competing against the best partnered squads that esports arena has to offer yeah no doubt about 100 thieves especially coming off of their win in the previous season has a lot to prove going forward they were another team that was on the outside looking in they barely even qualified yes they won their week in their groups during the last weekend of the algs but they were struggling up until that certain point and it's interesting because they're the team that is one of the most prize winning winningest teams that we had with the amount of money that they won at the end of the last season so there's a lot of pressure on them but the pressure kind of got lifted off once they started to kind of suck, frankly. And now all of a sudden they're back <laughs> playing really well. So I'm excited because those are those are three players that I really love and uh, love watching. And I think that they have uh, a really fun play style and a lot of intensity that they bring to the table in terms of uh, Apex. And I, I just want to see them do well. So I'm glad to see them really coming into form when it really matters. Yeah, they... They've definitely got the definitely got the roster to back it up. We're going to take a look, of course, at how you can win today. If you haven't tuned into Series E before, it's a lot like the ALGS Pro League. We're going to play six games. You're going to try and get as many points over the course of them as possible. For any first place finish, you get 12 points. You can see it on the right of your screen. Scale it all the way down to between 11 and 15th. You get one point. But there's another way to get points, T-squared, and it is so important. One kill gets you one point per. And so you wipe out four squads, you've already basically got first. Exactly. That's not easy to do, though. A lot of times when you see the amount of kills that get put on the table, it's anywhere between, you know, 10 to 15 kills. And that's a really, really good game. If you can rock out 30 points, get 18 kills plus the win, you are just in another level right now. So it's going to be fun because we also have the new TSM squad and we have Verholz coming in. Knock comes in on Esports Arena, refills him as we take a look at the team names and the players that are coming on. And you're gonna see a lot of familiar players. You're also gonna see a lot of familiar players on different teams, just like we were talking about Noct. He comes in right on that first spot, taking Verholz's spot. He's also going and playing the legend that Verholz was playing as well. So it's gonna be exciting to go and see that. And you're also gonna see some new sponsors coming forward and new teams like Team Excedrin, Team Nerf, excited to see what they're gonna do. And also teams that had to fight through the relegations, Team Vizio, with Phony Fury and Scissors, a team that's been doing really well in the ALGS as well. So when we talk about stack lobbies, this is definitely one of the most stack lobbies that you're going to see in all of Apex, whether we're talking about Esports Arena or just in uh, the finals for ALGSs. This is really, really competitive. It's true. I mean, the, the, yeah, like you say, that level of competition is at its highest right now. And I like that you brought up Team Exedrin, even if it was just in passing, because they're a team that I want to focus on today, at least initially during our first couple games. I want to see what the interaction between them and G2 is like, because at least based off of yesterday, they may very well share a drop spot. And Team Exedrin seemed like they were almost trying to mirror G2's style earlier on yesterday. But one of the things that they ended up finding a little bit more success with was being playing more for the zone and while these teams try and figure out their style especially the partnered squads who've been thrown together during the start of the season my curiosity does lie around whether they'll be able to face up to other high-powered teams that land exactly where they like to and the players are going to have a good idea of where each team is going to land but since it is the first day of the pro day we may see some 50 50s here and there i doubt excedrin is going to go over towards g2 side because they're going to have a major headache if that's the case and i don't know if any amount of excedrin is going to go and fix that one because g2 is probably the nastiest team in terms of protecting their drop spot even better than tsm no one really messes with them down at thermal station because they've been known to just throw fists and punch people out they won't even go for guns they'll just all land on one person <laughs> and just knock them out and then start shooting their bodies after that so uh there's there's a lot of you know respect for them and there's no one that's really going to be interested in ego challenging them if they are they're probably going to find themselves at the bottom of the mobile one leaderboard but you know going back to other teams that i'm looking forward to is ghost gaming a team that didn't qualify for the playoffs they were right on the outside looking in i think they we're somewhere around that 23rd to 25th range overall. Saw Six tweet out that he's really excited about his team. They're still improving, and there's a lot of work to be done. So it's cool to see them kind of stick through it and stick together, even though they didn't make the playoffs. I know a lot of teams, you know, they'd probably change if that was the case. If they didn't make it and they didn't reach their goal, they would start pointing the finger and start blaming each other. Instead, they're all taking accountability and realizing that they all need to improve individually and as a team if they want to go and, you know, reach their goals. 
Yeah, and, and w- one of the things that I'm really excited for on Ghost, and I can even expand this over to eSports Arena as well, is the dispersion of talent from bench warmers in, in the pro scene. They've sort of opted into three different squads, and with Madness going over to Ghost, he does bring an incredible amount of experience into the game. We're going to see it play out right here, right now, live, though, as we are dropping in for our very first game of the Pro Day here in Series E Season 4. Yeah, take a look at where Esports Arena is going to go. A typical over towards the Lava side in Lava City, and we'll see if anyone can test Big Mod as well, because there is a lot of loot to be had over there, and you are going to have beacons to go and scan. So Nox going to do us a solid and find out where zone number two is going to be, and we'll see if that pops up over towards that south-hand side, and they're going to be liking that. Looks like it's going to be anywhere between Lava Siphon. I mean, this is tough to call, because if this bounces to any other different POI, it's going to be extremely difficult to see and you can see where that first ring is so realistically you're thinking over towards tree and lava siphon kind of that building right where renegades is kind of floating around is going to be a really really solid spot to go and hold but this is one of the most popular spots for a 50 50 looks like a cedron like you were talking about looking for a landing spot knowing that they're not going to go over towards thermal station side they get pretty darn close to going over towards thermal here and they're going to find themselves in the first 50 50 nerf Turns first one to go down CLG Nana with the wingman gonna be able to find the knock and the flush as well So not the best start for the pro day for turns, but we'll see if they can bounce it back No, this is likely I believe going down over by lava siphon We're gonna get a chance to check in with that but a CLG end up moving their way out towards hot springs Curious if they'll be able to find a few more kills stacked up. Like you say, everybody's sorting things out in the first couple games right now. Does still give CLG time to reposition, gives everybody time to reposition and try and get out of here while they still can. There's no there's no real cracks yet, no flesh gets found. Although as I say that, Exedrin get one of their own. Kim Chi Lee popping up to the high ground and a nice shot on the Mastiff as well. He takes down yet another member of Nerf. So this is interesting because there's three teams within the vicinity and now G2 is going to go and join because they saw so much action coming forward. And look at gentrifying and just look at how he is just playing out of his mind already to start this one. You could tell just from his movement and the way that they've collapsed on here, gentrifying is really on another level from these other players just in terms of the, you know, just the movement in general, right? You can see that he's co completely covered in terms of how he's taking angles. He's ready with his teammates as well. So I really like this aggression from G2, which is fairly rare, but holy cow, he's taking some serious damage. Holy moly, where did that come from? It might just be from over by Harvester where it was Exet that liked to land, but instead Excedrin have taken the long way around and actually forced G2 back in towards Thermal Station. Off of that really big chunk, I can only assume, the headshot with this wingman does quite a bit of work, and especially with no real helmets, Excedrin are actually looking for kills onto G2. This might be get them getting a little bit too big for their britches. I'm getting nervous, T-squared. Yeah, they definitely need to fall back, and that's the right play. Thing is, is you don't really know which team is which at that point because there's so much going on. You have Nerf in the area, you have Excedrin, you have CLG, you have G2. So you have four teams collapsing on, collapsing on staging. And that just goes back to what you're talking about where Excedrin doesn't know where their landing spot is going to be. And maybe CLG doesn't either. Obviously, Nerf doesn't know what they're doing. They just got melted to begin things. And now take a look at what Vizio is doing. They're going to be locking down the mid bridge over towards where the zone could possibly end remember we we're talking about lava siphon harvester maybe over towards the tree side well this is directly in the middle of all of them and you also get a respawn beacon over there so we'll see if this ends up paying off for them 100 thieves they're locking a spot inside of the zone as well they have a pretty interesting composition they have double rotations coming through with ash and valkyrie so that's going to be fun to go and watch and vane has been putting in some serious work on that though. It's fascinating to see the way that 100 Thieves end up playing this as well, because I believe they actually dropped Lava Siphon quite early on. They had been going launch site for so long. This is a team that I just associate with taking that southern end, but instead choosing to go a little bit more central, they've already got themselves all purples, and like you talked about, are in one of the best positions, especially if this pulls over to them, fighting for their spot right now, though. It's up against Lazarus, one of our teams that was doing so well yesterday in the open night, have earned their place in the pro night and now might just be taking advantage of it. the momentum they have on the high ground low shield but nobody's chunked out just yet nice stick right there it looks like 
Vayne was doing some serious damage, but it has to get answered right back, and it does. So that's going to be two knocks coming through. Z Davis, last one alive in a two-on-one -on -one situation. And Scree can do a couple different things. He can go for the first, or he can continue to push forward. And now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Huge flank there from Hal. They got to the party extremely early there. That's one of the things that TSM does so well, coming in and fighting that first third party. And this time... They're going to be able to pick up some kills along the way. You can see Verholz is on Bloodhound. Pretty interesting to make him switch off oh. the Valkyrie. Not quite sure if I agree with that, especially because he's one of the best Valkyries in North America. Sticking him on the Hound is kind of uh, home to Sentinels because that's what Sentinels is doing. But yet they're rocking Ash instead. So I, I, I want to see how Verholz does on Bloodhound. I think he's way too talented, way too individually skilled to play someone without an escape character, especially... Valkyrie, so we'll see. We'll keep tabs on TSM and what they're going to be doing. Oh, for right now, Malice Mamba, he's one that's definitely wishing he had that bit of an escape as Razor need to bubble up and try and defend their fallen teammate. A nice stick comes in, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough for Bursty. Does end up getting a knock almost, but instead has to pop back into his own bubble. Phony ends up falling in the meantime, though. And this is a 2-3 squad fight right now as even more people are getting involved coming over from Lava Siphon. Xset are showing up and Vizio severely chunked out or down to just scissors on this Valkyrie that as he talked about has a lot of mobility and needs to make some really big use of it. And then you have Noble Big Chillin kind of overlooking everything. The problem with that little trailer is if you get there too early you're susceptible to getting pushed out and that's exactly what happened. There was too much focus on over there and now TSM is going to be focusing on just continuing to pepper more players along the way. And you can always see how Hal is staying within, you know, pretty good distance, phase distance of his teammates here. R301, PK, you'll notice a lot more people, you know, going with the PK, going with the Mastiff instead of the EVA 8 after the buffs and nerfs that ended up happening to the shotguns overall. Plenty of armor swaps coming in here for TSM as well. And Hal really seems to be in full uh, force today, just coming through and in that black market as well, a little early Christmas shopping for the squad. The one thing that I can say looking at this is that at least he's not looking for light ammo because that is the one thing that I associate with Hal constantly. And for right now, at least, he is full up and will be able to keep it topped up. They've got the option to rotate into center building as well once this first ring finishes closing in just a few seconds. Try and get that next scan. But interestingly enough, Intel have already taken that little bit of real estate and they'll be the ones with the big information advantage going in towards zone three. We've still got, I believe, some reses, some pickups, rather, on a team the likes of Vizio, who have popped over down towards Harvester as well. We'll see if they're able to survive for long enough, because remember, the big question today is, with their 100-point finish yesterday, can they replicate the success? What my favorite strategy is, is going into zone number two and hitting the scan in the zone for round number three, and then Valkyrie ulting to a dominant spot, or into a spot where you feel very safe that you could play for because I would say nine times out of 10, if you can get the zone three information and you're a pro player, especially in these lobbies, you're gonna be able to have a really great idea of which zone end zone that's gonna be. You don't really know until you get to that point, zone number three and zone number four, until then it's just an educated guess. But G2, they're doing exactly that. They're hitting the scan in the back of the tree. So if we can pull that up and find out exactly what zone we're looking at, that would be awesome. And then we get an idea of what G2 is thinking. They're gonna play the high ground over towards this tree side, but ping's going down about 300 meters away. Judge Fighting does have a Skyward Dive. He wants to go and use that one. But we did get Whoa. the mini-map up there, and we saw how many teams were in that vicinity. Speaking of teams getting in the vicinity, Intel flying in, but they are weak already. So we'll find out if this is a fight that they want to take against G2. Yeah, it's very it's very surprising to land in Shree and go, oh, hey, sorry, I didn't realize that one of the best teams in NA was already posted up here. My bad. They're going to play towards the center right now as Exedrin trying to fight for dominance inside of Harvester are going to be able to do so. Cleaning out Xset, sending them out at 19th. Definitely not the way they wanted to start that after the momentum that Xset has been accruing recently. I'd say they started off the... Pro League pretty darn rough, but ever since then have been building up to be taken out so early by Exedrin, who had a rough day yesterday, is definitely humbling. And you can see the portal that ended up going down as we see what Esports Arena is doing. They're going to be locking down the platform over here. Another one of those spots where if you get there too early, all the focus starts going on over towards your side. So defensive bombardments are going down. Looks like that's going to be an enemy defensive bombardment because Duplex is still holding on to that one. But this is a very risky spot. Fortunately, they have plenty of ammo. Plenty of batteries, plenty of loot over there. They took their sweet time 
crafting over towards the backhand side of launch site. They were over there big chilling in the Lava City side. I'm pretty sure they also got big mod to themselves too. So this could be a really powerful position. It could also be where the zone may continue to go over towards them too. But it looks like they are trying to play the edge, get some gatekeeping, get some kills, and then they're going to make them play a little bit later. Fun is going to be doing the unorthodox composition again over here too. They don't really have any type of... Of rotation which is super interesting in a meta where you constantly need to rotate he's gonna be busting off the fuse yeah I, I i like that they're experimenting here first day of open and you've got a little while in december to get going but in this case intel on the flank right now it is a 6v3 with you sandwiched in the middle as Team Liquid, and unfortunately, Fuse just isn't going to do you a whole lot of good here. They've got a decent amount of defenses for right now, but with Cody hurling in a nade, already putting down a lot of damage with the flatline. He's finally going to attract some attention, and has to watch his back as well, because teams are stacked up inside of Tree, and starting to move there as everybody gets that zone read, or at least starts to get an idea based on how everybody else is moving. Intel... Nice bits of shots with the, the Rampage for right now. We're going to continue applying pressure, but not committing too hard, crucially. Yeah, I just don't think Fuse makes sense in competitive. It really doesn't, because when you think about just how strong the other kits are for the newer legends, like Valkyrie and for Ash, it just helps out in those situations where you're stuck right there. You could have Ash ultimate out. You could have pulled out if you were Wraith. So to be sitting there and say, hey, we're going to sacrifice no rotation, plus we're going to sacrifice not getting beacon info because we're not rocking a recon character as well all you're really saying is okay well here we go with fuse and these little grenades that we could toss out in these rings of fire is that going to be enough it's gentrifying with the hacks i'm not quite sure what that was <laughs> god does end up getting his teammate taken down designful on the floor now and with bubble already expended by resulta getting him up is going to be difficult jen's going to go for it right now with an arc star right next door that can't actually finish this off jen takes a nice chunk off of that but they might be able to, in this chaotic situation, get themselves a little bit of respite if Team Intel can lay down suppressing fire for them with the Zineful almost taken out right there. Resulta ends up finding Flesh, and the space is tight for G2. You talked about using that Ash portal earlier to potentially get yourself out of danger. This is what they need to do right now, and I don't even know if they have the cooldown. Well, they have the bubble, and that's the big cooldown that they really needed out of anything. So that's going to be big. Also, having the gold armor is going to help them continue to heal up a little bit faster. But really nice job there from Resulto, hitting those triple take shots and making sure that even though they didn't have the bubble, they still were able to get their teammate up. And that was a very, very hectic situation. So this is going to be difficult because now G2 has expended a lot of their resources, and they're going to have to more than likely take a fight and win that fight very shortly if they want to continue their pace in this game you can see two cells there for resulta he's already needing to use one of those so that's a tough situation to be in as we see what amu's doing hiding in our first tomcat rat cam and this looks like a spot where a stinky little rat would hide <laughs> yeah it's the opener of pro league and and i'm sorry Anmu, but it doesn't seem like things have gone your way See how long he can survive. See when he gets swiped eventually as Intel end up finding another member of TL. This weird three-team skirmish off in the south ends up continuing and I assume drawing more attention. Surely the squads over in Lava Siphon are starting to go, what is happening over here? We've seen Nox, we've seen Renox, we've seen everything, but ultimately it's G2 that come out on, the hi on that high ground. Crucially, they do not have next zone read, so they don't know that they can't stick around here for too long, so it's going to start closing in the next 20 seconds, and they have that Valkyrie reposition if they really need it. It's a sticky situation, though, because wherever they Valkyrie redeploy, there's going to be a lot of teams in the vicinity, so this is going to be a very interesting rotation now because round three is when things really start to chunk, as you can see. Aubrey really gets knocked there by a member of Splash. You're going to have Knock involved. Hal is going to be there as well. Phony gets involved with Noble with the charge rifle, too, so expect to... A couple of squads to get dropped right here, and a couple other squads to be in a desperation situation. C9 must have just been rotating out of the open and having absolutely zero fun with it. They haven't entirely gone out just yet, but this is not boding well. Look at that Ash Portal, though, underneath. This is what we talked about G2 doing earlier, and now Intel have to siege them from above, dissuade this push. There's still one member left on the high ground. Mooney spots him now, but there's another squad rotating underneath, and Intel cannot fight a war on two fronts, so what are they going to do? Are they just going to give up this position? Tough spot. I mean, they could do something crazy, but they do get a knock. Petty Boss gets one onto Results over here. 
This is the loot in the fight they were looking for. However, they are taking zone damage here very shortly. They're taking damage over from the side. CLG finding themselves in a skirmish oh. as well. That's going to be Kimchi and Team Excedrin getting their second squad wipe as well. This is the, I believe, same exact spot where they found, found another squad wipe. So look at all those death boxes just sitting there. Plenty of armor swaps, plenty of loot do we have. It's kind of wild that they've managed to control Harvester so well, and I like that they've taken what they learned from yesterday about themselves and translated into it being very clearly a strong zone team. They hold a spot that they think will scale well, and they just take down whoever dares push in. It always feels like they're running down the hill as well, so with even Team Complexity I mean, not wanting to challenge them right there, being inside the ring right on the edge of this Harvester S may just be the thing that keeps complexity in the game. Exedrin, though, will have a long way to go. We can only expect Ring seems to be pulling more and more towards Tree as time goes on, and that'll be where Exedrin really have to worry, when they've got to leave Harvester and into the open. Tough shot to hit right there. Fury getting fairly close to that one. Now. I like this. Pulling out the R301 in that instance, just continue to pepper damage. Also has a frag grenade. If he wants to go and use that one, the beautiful thing about Loba is getting all these extra grenades if you really want to go and utilize that one. But this zone looks like it's going to continue to pull over towards this truck side. Meanwhile, how? TSM and Knights duking it out. You can see how weak everyone on Knights is. That bubble just going down for protection. Everyone's still fairly healthy on the other side of TSM. And they make quick work of the Knights. Swirls, the first player that I've seen with red armor so far, so most likely putting in the most damage. That is a welcome change as well. TSM, who uh, have been sorting out their identity ever since the swap up with Verhulls, and I would say throughout the entirety of Pro League, from what, what was it, what was a zone team that struggled to find engagements, and now to a team that can very clearly clean up. They get those kills, but Esports Arena are right next door, and I'm sure they'd like a piece of TSM if they can find it. Keep checking on those squads later, though, right now. It's all about the rat fight, and 100 Thieves end up winning it, taking out the last member of Lazarus. And Omnu, now looking for a little bit of safety, may just find himself in a very unwelcome spot. Jet gets taken down. Last member of G2 should be going out with him, moving us down to 12 squads. 11 now as Noble meet their end, and we're very close to that half-gone, half-left mark. Yeah, there it is. 10 squads remaining as we start to get into... The thick of it in terms of placement points, TSM, like you said, kind of coexisting right next to Esports Arena. We may see these two two teams duke it out right here over towards the high ground. We do get an idea of where zone number five is going to be. Bubble's going to go down because defensive bombardment is going to be landing. And that is a pretty big play here by Esports Arena. Skill Cakes has the positioning if he wants to go and use that one. You see defensive bombardment gets used over towards Esports Arena side as well. Most likely reps trying to buy some time for that bubble just to get them in a couple extra seconds, but they are sandwiched. You can see two teams coming in over towards the side, Renegades if they want to go and push that one, Esports Arena over towards the other side as well. This is looking good for TSM. No, Hal tests things out with the portal right there and ends up going back down to the low ground, but he's swapping back and forth and on flesh as well with ESA recognizing this and starting to push up. They take down Verholst with a little bit of health com from Complexity taking down reps and leave it just the one member of TSM alive. It should be Hal on the low ground still, but just buying time, ratting things out for now. They've, collect they've collected their KP. But it only got them so far. ESA now pushing up onto the high ground where we know we saw we saw a squad earlier. I believe it was Team Vizio that was still holding the bridge after all this time. Renegades looks like they're going to be dropping complexity. Hal still stayed alive throughout all that. And now he's going to be the newest Tomcat rat after Omnu was dropped. But nothing can really feel better than if you're Esports Arena and getting the kill on your former teammate in the first pro day over here coming down in season four. Now, what a job by Team Vizio to get over towards this high ground and lock it down for quite some time, especially because you're not using Caustic. And typically Caustic is the way that you want to go and control all of this AOE. But Fury's going to brace it back on over towards the squad. He's going to be having that black market back up here soon too. And with all the death boxes around, he's going to have kind of a pick the pick of litter of what he wants to go and hold. But speaking of Caustic Team, Skittle Cakes with nine batteries is starting to push in. Jesus, you just can't kill this guy. It's got to be the burst, but this is the caustic and the holding power that you were talking about slowly wrestling away territory from Team Vizio. Can they fight this off? Devotion puts in a lot of work, but Skittle Cakes ends up being taken down low first with Renegades going out in the kill feed right now. We're dropped down to our top six, and Vizio continue to fight for their spot. That Kraber in the hands of Fury was deadly yesterday, and it 
needs to be today in order to keep Esports Arena from out skirmishing them in the close range. They're really going to need a bubble on the Esports Arena side right here. Vizio is really putting a lot of pressure here. One Kraber bullet to really determine the outcome here. And it's interesting to watch Fury on Loba start to run out of ammo. So that black market should be going down here very shortly, if not now. And there it is. So they're just taking a lot of damage. The problem is, is do you even have time to loot? Because if you get your nose stuck inside of the black market, you may end up going down. And there's the push, just exactly as we were talking about. Scissors does that, and Duplex is going to respond. Nicely called there, Esports Arena know that letting you get a little bit of extra ammunition could be their downfall. They push up and get that initial knock, but instantly retreat as a third party is coming in. ESA are playing this fight perfectly, and it is so incredible to see. We've got Hal taken down. That's the Tomcat Rat on the top of your screen. Now eliminated. And with ESA on top of this bridge taking that power spot, they may be in the best place to control this game. Only four squads remain, and they should be fine. I like that Esports Arena is continuing to add pressure and just push Team Vizio out of that. That was a really good job just bullying them. And that's not easy to do. We saw how well Vizio was locking that down against every other team that came inside and pushed them. But Esports Arena was not playing around. And really, you have to give credit to Skittle Cakes. Again, not having Caustic there really is just a difficult situation. Anytime that an enemy Caustic just starts coming up with barrels and then starts with the Nox Gas Grenade and then they continue to buy real estate and just chunk you down, chunk you down. Next thing you know, you're running out of ammo, you're running out of cells. Think that you can go and loot really quickly with that black market, but the problem is, is the bubble wasn't inside. Even if the bubble was inside, they're still gonna go and push that one. But Intel's playing phenomenal. Ghost Gaming has been sticking things out as well. I believe it's them splash, and there it is. Ghost Gaming staying alive underneath this bridge over here. We'll see if they can pull this one out. Yeah, this final ring gonna start to push everybody together, but on the high ground, it is ESA that have the run of things. Ghosts need to find an ingenious play to dethrone them, I suppose, from the top. But with it, Madness getting chunked out back on his wraith. We'll see if he's able to heal up before things get really deadly. They're gonna need shot at from above because they do have the micro high ground even underneath this bridge. They may just be able to find at least one more squad wipe before they go out, especially if Six is finding headshots like that. Well, there's three bubbles down. I would like Double. to see Six throw his bubble. There it is. So he's going to toss his, but the problem is there's a grenade inside, and now that bubble doesn't really look that good because now you're not using that one. Madness was taking a lot of damage from behind, and now Esports Arena is going to be loving what they see as the so Oh my god. They just farm up the damage underneath them. ESA, they're gonna drop down shortly. They already know that they've won this game. It is a matter of cleaning up the kills and shooting you out of the sky. ESA with perfect control in the mid game and great use, like you said, of that caustic to wrestle it away. They end up walking away with our first game of the day and really make this a pro night to remember. I like to see that they're getting the momentum going back as well. Yeah, formerly Team Intel coming through and just looking so strong over here. Team Esports Arena, you could see why they were sitting at number one in the ALGS for quite some time, especially when they had Verholz now not coming in and feeling the shoes. But it's more about their positioning, the way that they were able to execute through all that, going through and landing on the platform and then going and taking over that really open area where they forced TSM into a sandwich and then slowly methodically pushing their way up into the god spot on top of the bridge. There's a lot of layers of their game that other teams can take note of. Esports Arena looking solid, and it looks like they haven't really missed much since Knock got, addition, uh, got added to the team. <laughs> no, if, if anything, their frag power has definitely taken a big boost right now, and I can't wait to see how much it impacted their kill score and their score overall. But to find that out, we got to do some math on the back end, so we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. Yeso here inside of Studio Blue in Esports Arena HQ. And a big game for Team Esports Arena to kick off Pro Night here. They win game number one. Well played for them. I love the patience, especially on the high ground there when pushing that fight with Team Vizio. Team Esports Arena just poking and prodding, not feeling pressured to go all out to take that fight as quickly as possible. They just take their time, whittle down the health bars there of Team Vizio. They end up winning in the fight, and then they're able to masterfully hold that high ground and end up winning the game thanks to that. So well played by Team Esports Arena. Let's check out our player of the game here for our first one of the day in here in Pro Day. It's going to be a fun night here, folks. Five more games still ahead of us, but Team Esports Arena with a strong start grabbing a win here. And we'll have to see how things shake out on the leaderboard. Obviously, a bunch of other squads feeling good about the way that they showed up in game number one. We saw Ghost there in the late circle. Team Intel doing well. Vizio getting into the mix as well. Again, trying to carry that momentum. But our player of the game here for the first one is going to be Duplex, the IGL here for Team Esports Arena. Three kills, two assists, and over 2,000 damage and this is just dupe doing what dupe does if you guys saw draft day we talked about duplex and dupe was the damage leader for season three that is the most damage in the entirety of season three of series e and he's going to do more of that here while he may not necessarily have the highest kill numbers or assists he is going to contribute significantly in the damage department and he does it here once again, so well played there from Duplex and Team Esports. We don't have to see if they can keep it going in game number two. Do want to let you guys know if you're looking to grab some Esports Arena swag, maybe you want a Series E hat like mine, or maybe you want to grab one of these brand new Intel jerseys hanging on the wall behind me, you can. Head over to shop.esportsarena.com right now. You can pick one up for yourself. It makes the perfect holiday gift for the gamer in your family. We're going to go to a quick break here, though. When we come back, Dia and Tom will get you ready for game number two. Welcome back, ladies and gents, to Series E. This is week one, the pro night, and, well, we've already gotten started off to the races with an ESA win, but the question, of course, at T-squared is not only can they continue it, but by how much did they win, and only our Mobile One leaderboards hold the true answer. So I can't wait to get a chance to take a look at those because that's, that's the sort of momentum that you start building, and more importantly, the buffer that you build between yourself and other squads that want your title. They started to pick up a lot of kills, so let's find out just exactly how many kills they did to, they did get as we take a look at that Mobile One leaderboard. And hey, not that many, oh. only seven. It seemed like so much more because I feel like we saw every single kill that they did get. Ghost Gaming and Team Intel directly behind them, but that is a pretty even board that we're taking a look at. Nobody really pulling away quite yet, so still anybody's game. Big surprises, I guess, would be C9 and Liquid getting eliminated fairly early as those are two teams that we have really high expectations of so we'll see if they can bounce back still five games remain though we're doing six games overall and still anybody's ball game and the thing that really surprises me as well in a very positive way is that team intel and team Exetron, after having a i would say pretty tough day yesterday have come back and are in third and fourth and really within touching distance of that first place spot to see them and to see Team Exedrin specifically underneath Harvester just absorbing team after team was a really big upswing for them. And I can't wait to see how off of what was a pretty chaotic game one, how that ends up translating for them later on. The other, th the other squad, of course, that has to impress me is Ghost because the way they managed that end game is really the thing that brought them up to 18 points. Now that was very nice. That was very nice to do. Let's take a look at the mobile one moment of the game in game number one. Also, G2. Surprising to see them coming out of thermal station, not able to find a spot into the zone. But we're taking a look at the final moments over here of game number one. You could see six tossing that bubble down. 
but a grenade somehow sneaks its way in there and that forces him down onto the ground. Ideally, you want to get that bubble where you're getting complete cover so the rest of your teammates are going to have a decent amount to go and work with. But look at the kills that are being picked up over towards the side. Intel is picking up kills. Esports Arena is big chilling up over towards the side. And this is where they picked up all of their kill points. You can see, yes, they did get those kills earlier pushing out Team Vizio, but now they're going to be able to finish this one off and finish it off in style. And that's what you can continue to expect out of Esports Arena. They're going to have a lot of different areas that they're going to be able to control. They're going to have a lot of different facets of their game. They're going to be really strong at third party. They're going to be really good at rotations, strong in 3v3, just head-to-head -head skirmishes. But their positioning this game was really second to none over anybody. And then their decision-making was also extremely well done. So I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do going forward as we get ready for game number two. But something to keep an eye on are the teams that are really struggling over towards the staging side trying to find a landing spot because you have a lot of teams that are congested over there. You have CLG trying to land over there. You have Nerf landing over there. I believe there's another partner team that's trying to land over there too. So you have three teams all in one spot. That's going to get ugly quick. Yeah, and with, with that, I believe it was Exedrin that started off their game there as well, making a pretty fast rotation over Harvester once they realized what was going on. I was surprised that we didn't get even more kills because for all of that, we had quite a few rats in the mid game, but not a whole lot of full squad thirsts. And especially for a team like not just our partner squads, but CLG, who I think have been searching for a home for quite a long time, ever since Esports Arena uprooted them so early on from Big Mod. I want to I want to see if uh, they can set themselves up for success in the playoffs that we already talked about uh, by finding a place that they feel comfortable defending and comfortable landing consistently. As we drop into game two, we're going to find out what happens over that staging side, though, because, well, I, for one, am very excited to see if these kills go down again. Xset taking to their traditional harvester will have the opportunity to third party, and G2, we already saw, run up from Thermal, but Exedrin once again start their day off right, landing right in the center of staging. And Harvester is such a more viable spot to go and land now that they've added a beacon. Speaking of beacons, knocked again. going to be the first person to go and show us that zone scan for us. If we could take a look and see exactly where that one's going to be. Another southern zone over here. And it's looking a little bit like deja vu, honestly, because you still have Harvester inside there. You have Lava Siphon and a little bit of tree. A little bit of launch site's going to be in as well. And you can see pings going down very close to where 100 Thieves and Nerf are going to be. So that's going to be a very important important spot to go and hold as we take a look of where these teams are going to go and rotate from but look at over towards the lava fissure side clg is going to go and land over there and now you're going to have three teams including razor on top of one another trying to fight over countdown and lava fissure Oh my lord, it just, it, there's just so many squads battling for their position. CLG again, feel a little bit lost, but having not dropped a member yet, perhaps they can claim this area for themselves. I'm expecting us to get quite a bit of action here in all the lava related areas. Vatro starts it off right though for CLG, taking down the first member of Nestle Splash and now going on the chase with this Valkyrie. Has that extra bit of mobility to make sure that this building isn't safe and finds the laser on to Draco's to finish off Nestle Splash, our first squad to go out. Could be another squad going out here very soon if CLG is not going to be able to get their armor swaps. And remember, Razor was in the area, and Razor is trying to bounce back after a very poor performance in game number one. But you got to give credit to Vatra. That was some really nice Valkyrie movement using that jetpack to go and take different angles, but also just to get that first knock. Anytime you can go get a first knock in these situations and give yourself a three on two. That really bodes well for your confidence and just in general for being able to win that fight. But it's all about that reset over here. You don't want to just win that fight and then go out in 19th. Getting two squad wipes here would be amazing, especially when you're trying to find a spot to land. But Hemlock, without a mag, even eight limited resources in terms of healing over here. This is going to be pretty difficult for CLG. And you, win, you begin to wonder if it's worth it for them to continue to land on these teams and still not be able to find a landing spot. That is going to be a storyline that we're going to have to continue to look forward to. But 100 Thieves, again, fighting fairly early. This is one of those times where you should be rotating. Instead, they're finding themselves in the middle of a fight. And especially with teams that really wanted to run over from launch side, I believe it was Nerf that ended up landing over there this time. They may have just found themselves with a squad that did try and go for that early rotate as Ooh. Razor would check back in with them. And they've already taken two big chunks out of CLG and make it a third very shortly as the PK connects, taking out the last member. And CLG didn't get to progress very far, despite the fact that they had an amazing start. 
And that's what you love to see, getting an R301, a gold R301 out of all of that, plus the gold helmet, but what sexy peacekeeper shots there coming in from Malice Mamba, who had a phenomenal performance over the weekend on board with TSM over towards this broken building. This is a building that typically you see them rotate over if they're trying to lock things down in the Fragment West, but right now it seems like they are interested with this really solid armor and also the gold helmet onto Verholz. It looks like they're going to uh, continue to push on this one, and I like this idea. You shouldn't really be worried about third parties at this point. I don't think teams are going to be rotating over or through here. They should be rotating right past there, but the internal clock is going to have to tick here very soon, and that's what those scans are for. So if for a whole season thinks that something is up or if there's going to be somebody else waiting in the wings, that's going to be time to bail. So not going to be that big of a deal. Gold Helmet's going to help get that ultimate right back on up a little bit sooner, and they're going to be able to have scans a little bit faster. This is the thing that I really like about TSM, at least trialing the Bloodhound right now, is that it gives them so much power early on. Scans, especially off of drop, are ridiculously useful and so terrifying. It ends up letting them claim market without having to fight, without having to even really fire a shot. And now they have the Replicator to be able to use a team that normally ends up operating with pretty low amounts of loot. Now has the opportunity to get themselves a little bit more give them some oomph inside of the mid game. And especially because they don't have that next zone read just yet, it's going to be all the more useful since they're going to have to fight for squads that have already taken up position in front of them. Squads potentially like Nerf, although hanging out over in launch site, they should have a good shot over at TSM if they try and rotate in late. And turns is the first player to get eliminated in the previous game. So hopefully this game he can this way. work on that and have some serious improvements. And they've already got some improvements because it couldn't really get much worse than it did in game number That's one. So we'll find out how they want to go and approach this situation. There is the geyser in front of them if they want to go and hit that one. But it looks like they are really into this drop. And... Getting this drop would be big, especially if you have a Kraber in there or something that's going to help with that wingman, because wingman without a mag, only six shots is an ideal in these situations. I like the use of the portal, giving them a little bit more safety on this push. Nobody's actually cracked open that care package just yet, so Turns does have the opportunity to, with a crack of his own, a nice shot there. He ends up finding a G7 scout, and you know what? I, I'm okay with him taking it. G7 Scout is one of the one of the only care package weapons that I find myself okay letting go. I'm interested in why he got rid of his shotgun there, especially because, again, there's no mag on this wingman, but you saw that big 71 headshot, so he's really feeling good about the wingman overall. Wingman is going to have that faster fire rate and also does some pretty decent damage up close. You're not going to get the big rips that you would with the shotgun, but now pings are going back down and he's wondering, maybe I did make a mistake over here. Did I grab the wrong weapon? There's still a little bit of time left on my portal. There's about 6% left, so we'll find out if that's gonna be what he's going for. All right, well, hopefully gets the chance to pick up that short range weapon again, especially because on this rate, this guy needs his firepower. And right now, Complexity needs some as well. They took that Valkyrie ult a little bit ill-advised into Lazarus, who showed absolutely no sign that they were in this building and now have to take a 3v3. Level's already down for right now, and Lazarus seems to be coming out the better with a really nice laser from Dank. He's Oots on up here, takes out Reptar, takes down Shiny, is working on the third, but a third party's already coming in. The Lazarus, uh, they were being waited on in the meantime. A nice shield bat and a surprisingly low amount of confidence from the squad that's trying to third party this. Means that Lazarus just absorb an entire squad and get themselves a little bit more loot almost for free. Omnu, Omnu, thinking about this on the outside right now, does find a nice few shots, but it's not going to be nearly enough to push off of, especially with no crack. Tough not having a mag there, having those extra eight bullets is going to do wonders for being able to find that kill because the tracking was really on point. But what a job there from Lazarus and what an unfortunate situation for Complexity. is. Oh, nice little Ash ultimate to get out of the defensive environment there too and get a little bit safer to the area where we saw Esports Arena holding down. That was the platform that they started down where the zip line is and then they made their way back down over where they pinched TSM in game number one. 100 Thieves trying to do something similar here, but without as many resources. Remember, there was about 300 light ammo going through on Duplex and Skittle Cakes. Meanwhile, you're looking at around 90 to 110 ammo for the rest of 100 Thieves to go and work with. And Esports Arena, what do you know? Locking down, again, what seems to be a priority position. They're just so good at locating where they want to go and hold and executing it as Dank is going to find, <clears throat> find excuse me, the rest of Complexity. That's going to be Monsoon going out. And they take 18th place. But what a job by Dank in that whole skirmish there. 
You saw how he was using the angles and kind of pushing up on everybody, keeping his back against the wall and fighting multiple players without taking really any damage throughout all that. And then fending off the third party by jumping up to the window. That was really impressive to watch. But when we look at this zone, you can see where Esports Arena is. They are southern of that zone. They are not in, but the zone continues to pull over towards the south. So they won't have that hard of a time moving forward. Yeah, this, this is really nice from them. With, uh, with ESA on the south side, of course, with Nerf next door, this may devolve into a fight. The squad that you talked about earlier, 100 Thieves, may want to drop down to the low ground to get themselves a little bit better of an angle of entry in towards this next zone, but there's also the potential that they don't actually know where this next bit is pulling just yet, and instead it may involve themselves in a fight. We saw one breaking out over towards Lava Siphon, and ESA, with a surprising amount of relaxation, just end up chilling up here, waiting for the game to come to them. And honestly, Tom, I like it. Though kill points are super important, Esports Arena being able to hold on to this edge of the zone almost guarantees them kills later on, especially if they play the way that they did in our first game. I like the idea. I like the thought process of letting other teams go and make mistakes. And that's what these top teams tend to do so well is as soon as you see a mistake, they go and immediately collapse on that and punish that one. You're also seeing Altics all just being left on the ground there so they can continue to hold grenades and meds and whatever they need to go and use that ultimate excel. They're going to have that option depending on really who needs it. I mean, any one of these players is going to value from the ultimate accelerate too. So whether it's Skittle Cakes needing to get that Nox gas grenade back up, maybe defensive bombardment, maybe, maybe you're going to need to rotate with the Skyward Dive. Most likely it's going to be used for one of the big boys instead because that Skyward Dive has a shorter respawn time and also they're fairly close to that zone, so they're going to be footing it overall. But Excedrin seems to love this spot. Whenever you can expect a zone to be over here, expect Excedrin to be locking this spot down. Thing is, again, without a caustic, we'll find out exactly how long they can really hold this. Yeah, curiosity here as to whether they'll be pushed out, especially from late rotating teams. We haven't seen anybody from G2 just yet, but if we take a look at the kill feed, things are getting pretty darn exciting here. Phony already gets dropped, and remember that this is Team Vizio. Big game just yesterday, already losing Phony and Scissors is really, really tough for them. Perhaps even being taken out entirely in just a few short moments as 100 Thieves start to clean up some of those kills as well. Hanging out right next door to Lazarus. It seems like at least you'll be able to rat this out for now as Vizio, but things could get real dicey real quickly. 100 Thieves popping right back into under that building, pop right back out again in almost exactly the same way, giving me a little bit of deja vu with the Ash ultimate, but it's just to pop in, get some kills, pop right back out again, and I like the way that they're playing it, as unorthodox as it may be. We gotta be careful. The new Matrix is coming out, and we all know what deja vu means. That means that when you try to escape all these parts are going to be blocked off and they're going to be locked inside of here so be careful 100 thieves you do not want to end up facing these squads there's gonna be 100 mr anderson's flying at you like it's absolutely nothing but they are oh on the move over here this is definitely the play getting back on over towards this open high ground is going to be a spot that we saw esports arena go and hold and they did a really good job yes there are some spots where teams are trying to coexist over here but realistically they should be worried about each other not really focused on you and if you could just kind of lay low you're going to be okay yeah, these crates, uh, incredible cover as well, especially from long distance and protecting you from all the teams over nearby in Lava Siphon. I believe they've got a replicator dropping right next door to them, which will, oddly enough, provide them some more impromptu cover just in case they need it. But 100 Thieves do need somebody scouting out around the sides right now because as good as these crates are, they're not a truck, and uh, approaching it can very well net you kills. So I like the fact that at least they... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Get out and instantly go up the height. We'll see if that works out for them. Ghost, in the meantime, inside of Lava Siphon are fighting for the central building, and this time the Kraber is in the hand of Six. Let's see what he can do with this. Six, always one of the more mechanically skilled players that we have. Having the Kraber in the hands of your Gibby is pretty strong too, because you're going to get that arm shield every single time that you decide to go and scope in, but when you're in such tight quarters over here, it makes things just a little bit dip more difficult. But what a ballsy combo. Kraber, PK overall. Panda's taking a lot of damage. Interesting to see Panda's back on that Bloodhound too. And Ghost Gaming doing the old school composition that we saw a couple of metas ago. And also copying a little bit of what TSM is going to be doing too. So two teams that are running the same composition. Two teams that are kind of 
different play styles, but also stuck in the middle of the zone over here. It's really going to rely on a six to land some sort of big shot and have a big opening. Yeah, the, the Kraber plus Bloodhound combination was looking pretty dirty right there. As you can see exactly, exactly why they have the confidence to run the Kraber PK that you talked about earlier. This, though, this is an interesting rotation. I remember when these were added into the game that it was so that teams could take a safe rotation across Lava Siphon, and I went, that's not safe. That is a one-way ticket to your death. Evidently, if you use it right, right. Ghost actually just get a pretty free ride over to the other side in towards the center of the zone and now find themselves right next door to Lazarus. It was free and we'll see if uh, they end up having to pay some sort of toll overall, but you can see in the building so many teams coexisting. Razor, Lazarus, you have Ghost Gaming inside of there. You have teams across from them like Team Intel looking at them. You have TSM ready to collapse. You have Renegades over here. What's interesting is you can see how split everybody on TSM was, and that was because Hal was putting down a portal. Meanwhile, 100 Thieves, who already had lost out on Skiri, finds themselves in a tough predicament over here. Yes, you have the banner, but that zone is going to be closing, and as that zone closes, more teams are going to start pushing their way in there, and 100 Thieves really feeling that right now. Six answers with the Kraber. This is really unfortunate for them. They end up going out on a nice, nice shot there. It does seal the deal. Unfortunately for that squad, 100 Thieves, uh, the last we saw of them had been pushing up to the high ground a little bit ill-advised, but well-advised, it seems like C9 made a push up to the high ground, and if I'm not mistaken, that is ESA that they ended up taking out in a surprising turn of events. I really wish we'd gotten to see that whole thing, because C9 are excellent fraggers, but ESA must have put up a pretty big fight. Yeah, but they didn't really seem to weaken them that badly. Two is speaking of weak, it's going to be Verholz with the melt there onto Saucer. Rep's going to counter bubble over here. There is a grenade inside of that one, but you can see there's a little bit of confusion on where these players are going to be coming from. However, Verholz and Hal on top of it, Rep's there with the timing as well. They're going to need some much needed heals throughout all of this too, because it's only one cell for Hal. I think Rep's had around four. I'm not quite sure what Verholz has in his backpack, but... That's a big win. Needing those extra resources is going to really help with all of these squads still just coming in and filling all of the vacancies that there is on side of World's Edge. Petty Boss taking a lot of damage. Going to have to go and hit that med kit. Hopefully has a battery or some extra cells when it's all said and done too. This bridge is a very unforgiving spot to go and try to push from. Fortunately, they do have double rotation legends in this composition. See if that pays out for them. They got to look out behind them as well. There could be some attention drawn over towards them from launch site. His Cody almost drops, but in the meantime, his friend Petty Boss does for real. Cody comes back up the high ground and eats it at the hands of Team Liquid. The entire squad going to be dropped here. TL running what is now the high ground of Lava Siphon, taking it away from Intel that had it earlier. And it's early Christmas. They're running a horizon. This is so much fun to watch. Uh, I don't know what they're going for here. If th this isn't League of Legends. It looks like they're going for some <laughs> serious wombo combo with like a Moo Moo and Misfortune like this is like a couple of years ago or something along those lines. But if you can land it, that is going to be extremely deadly. And I was wondering who is going to eventually go and try to use Horizon. If it's going to be anybody, it might as well be Nocturnal because when you throw that Nox gas grenade and you throw that black hole in there, it's virtually impossible to go and deal with, especially over towards the end of the zone. So now the team comp starting to make a little bit more sense as they switch it up, but I would still love to see fun on a different legend, a rotation legend, especially Valkyrie. Just such great utility, so much that you can do in, some, in terms of hitting the scans too. I really don't see any other reason to go and try to play anybody else, but that would be a sick shot if Six can go and land this one. You can see on the player outlines, three different squads directly in front, so you gotta be careful and pick your poison, especially with only two bullets left. Oh, as he's looking for another shot here, not going to find it. Last bullet for six, hasn't found the knock just yet, and won't actually end up getting it. So Ghost now find themselves in a situation where the Gibby really only has a Peacekeeper to work with. He's going to have to drop down to the low ground if he wants a chance to get this next weapon. Stay naughty, going down in the kill feed for right now. Nerf ends up finding Madness on Ghost, though, and that means they've got no safe position to get on. this res off. Nice bubble, and the fast res gonna come in. This should be relatively safe, and no gold backpack means that I'm Madness. Still will have time to heal up. It's gonna be a little bit riskier. Remember, just the PK now, and the 30-30 with six bullets. This is still very much backs up against the wall for Ghost. 
Not much ammo here for Fearing Live as well. 61 inside of this Rampage, locking down the high ground over here. A lot of squads remaining in this zone here. 12, almost all full squads too. As you see, Fun gets dropped by a grenade. So that must have been a ridiculous frag overall. But I love that bubble from Six. That was extremely needed because of the fact that you did not want to risk losing that player there. And yeah, that bubble, it's a big respawn. It's going to be about 30 seconds until it comes back up. But that teammate getting eliminated is basically forever. So I love that play. I think that was a much needed bubble. And I like the punch as well. Nice little play for newer, newer players to realize. Hey, don't res your player and your teammate right in the middle of the open. Throw the bubble down, get your teammate to cover and see how that can work out for you. But looking over towards the high ground area, Team Nerf is in a little bit of trouble. If that is a contested spot, they could end up getting pushed down off of this high ground. So they have to continue to focus that area. I am so curious as to what this portal is about. Are they trying to make their way into the truck? Because Nerf have a really amazing spot inside of this ring with Exedrin actually on the side as well. It seems like the partnered squads have got some of the best real estate inside of these zones. Take it up to the sky though. We're going to see if you end up hitting the ground. Exedrin looking upwards and even further up as Nerf were in fact trying to take that RV but instead end up finding out that it is not a safe place to go back into the ring and ultimately will be taken down entirely with Team Liquid joining them. Now Lazarus going out at the hands of the Knights who were on a roll this game. We may just see Exedrin finally contested in this corner. We saw the squad right behind them. We know that there's one right over this wall, and Krusen knows it as well. Finds the shots with the wingman. Seven squads left, and Exedrin can't afford to be pushed by any of them. So satisfying watching wingman shots connect, especially in succession like that. Krusen really putting the hurt on enemy teams and players, but what a tough situation for turns. You don't really realize it until the situation's over. In hindsight, it's 2020, but when you say, oh man, the portal over towards the roof, seems like a great idea until it isn't. And you wonder, maybe we should have walked it up, even if we walked it up, whether it been an opportunity to go and continue to be in a better place, you're not quite sure because Excedrin is just destroying right now, especially cruising with this wingman. Purple Mad hitting a majority of these body shots as well. He's just ripping players apart. And putting my wingman to shame and TSM right on the other side of this wall very well could find themselves on the wrong end of it with Xset suffering a knock right now. TSM are looking for vulnerabilities inside of this RV. Razor end up going out entirely with reps picking up that last kill but Xset are putting in the work as well and it's from very unorthodox spots inside of this ring. TSM are going to use that portal walk up on the RV much like Nerf did earlier but since they don't have the roof right now they've got all the time to harass the squad inside keep them there and lay down the damage to secure these kills the big thing is is Verholz to scan if he can go and get that one nice. how is playing like a madman immediately going in on to claim and then gonna go and queue out also dropped his red armor for a purple armor swap so we'll see if he ends up going back for that one but is he gonna use a battery to go and heal that and probably a med kit coming Whoa. in very shortly after that gold helmet with Verholz is gonna help again with those scans but look at the tracking coming through really nice job now we're in a three on three on three situation TSM looking for their first win after they watch esports arena win game number one up against what I believe are Knights and Exedrin Knights on the low ground. You're pushing into two squads at the same time if TSM want to go on the offensive here. But with Exedrin not having the bubble anymore, Kimchi gets taken down instantly by Reps with just Cruisin' left alive. This wingman is going to have to make miracles happen, and it will not. Verholst instead turns around on him, and the Knights are on the push to finish off game two. They take down Verholst initially, but playing the bubble perfectly, Reps is able to deal, deal the damage back. They should be able to take this game. TSM with a few more good shots could do it but the knockdown shields are just too obnoxious this caustic survived for so long and the knights end up stealing this game away a very rare 3v3 loss there for tsm it looked like the knights were on the ropes right there unorthodox misses with the pk coming in from hal reps was a little bit discombobbled with the armor shields that were going down the knockdown shields excuse me and knights is going to come out with that one whoever was running around staying alive in circles you got to give credit because that is not easy to do, especially against TSM, who had a lot of momentum. But I love the way that TSM played that all the way up to the very end, especially Verholz, who was looking around to possibly get some armor swaps on the ground, realizes Reps was already inside the box, realized, hey, this is not my time to go and try to loot. I'm going to go and try to lay down as much damage as possible. They left them with a two on two over towards the end, but Reps and Hal couldn't finish that one out. Knights taking game number two, but still a big game for all those teams that got to the final circle. That was not a tough zone to work with.
Yeah, we, we've seen these teams exceptional at identifying weaknesses. I think TSM definitely demonstrating it there, knowing when a squad has already made a big misstep and being able to punish it. We'll see how many points it got then, because if the Knights able to steal away that, away that win, at least you're going to be missing three points that you could have otherwise had. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back with even more Series E. Game over for headaches. Welcome back, everybody. What a win there for Knights. An incredible fight between themselves and TSM FTX there at the end of our second game. But the Knights come out on top with the victory there in game number two. Let's check out our player of the game here. I think I know who it's going to go to, but let's find out. It is going to be Guild there. Five kills and two assists and just short of 12 100 damage there on the Valkyrie and I do want to take a quick look just at the end of how that finished in that game because I was dying at the clip that we got you can see it behind me right now Hal trying to buy a little time and then Gil just comes zooming over the wall it's so beautiful there Gil just with the nice little flank Hal turns around and realizes it's all over for him and Knights grab the win there so well played from Guild well played from Knights you love to see it now we get a very interesting competition here with just four games left in the night esports are going to take game one and Knights grab game two well played from them do want to let you know guys we are open. Esports Arena is back. We are chugging. We got a ton of events going on. And if you want to check them out, just use exclamation point locations in Twitch chat. You can find the Esports Arena nearest you. We would love to see you in our arenas here very soon. Now, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, Dia and Tom will get you ready for game number three. You cannot see what I say. Tell me, where are you looking? There's no way that you can see what I see
Welcome back, ladies and gents. Two games down and now four to go. We've seen two very different wins, but two games where we've had a partner squad that I want to highlight. Team Exedrin doing pretty darn well, but with ultimately Knights able to steal away that win and Kildersons with the sick glide over the wall. The only question left is to see how many points it got them and what our Mobile One leaderboard has to show us. Yeah, let's take a look at the mobile one we were when we were counting, but just a great job of hitting that slide on top of the wall to give that extra boost, but a lot of kill points going on over to TSM as they picked up second place, plus the nine placement points too. So they're having a strong performance, and even though they haven't won either one of these games, they are going to be ahead of the teams that did win, Team Esports Arena and Team Excedrin. So uh, a very well-rounded game and still a very well-rounded leaderboard is so always nice to see after two games, no teams goosing quite yet, but still two, three big orgs on that right-hand side in the bottom. C9, CLG, Complexity. Looking forward to watching them bounce back. Yeah, I'm curious that C9 actually ended up going out so fast as well because eSports e Arena, who are still above them in the Mobile One leaderboard this time, ended up getting clean wiped by them. No contest down over at launch site. C9 took everybody by surprise and just deleted an entire squad from the map. And yet, even with that, only having four points at the end of the night, not too much, or at the end of two games, not too much to show for it. I'm hoping that they can get rolling inside of Game 3. Before we pop into Game 3, let's take a look at that Mobile One high-performance moment has to be towards the tail end of the game and looks like it's gonna be as excedrin they end up getting dropped reps came through with the double kill but while that happens you know that they're gonna be waiting in the wings on the night side you can see how needs to hit an armor swap he does reps goes and hits the armor swap verhol slides down and starts doing a ton of damage but does get taken out and this is that moment where you think okay tsm's got this in the bag it's hal it's reps right they're still fairly healthy mm -hmm. you never see them lose these type of 2v2s but the knockdown shields were just too strong, and you could see maybe it was Verhul's shield or could have been the enemy Gibby. And when once Hal starts missing these, missing these PK shots, and then all of a sudden someone just yeets it over the wall, there was no chance of coming back from that one. So again, a very rare missed opportunity, but TSM still sitting in first place when it's all said and done. And make no mistake, this is exact. This is a perfect example of Knights being on a massive upswing recently. To get them to to see them win the game here was really cool, especially because they've been shelling so well around the recent pickup of Joey and have been doing so throughout the ALGS Pro League season. Now we get the chance to see if they can replicate that success. As we're always looking for dropping into our third game of the day, this is going to be the one that brings you up to the halfway point. And if you haven't put up points, if you haven't put up a performance that you're satisfied with, now is the time to start doing it because you can still claw your way into those top three yeah no doubt no, about it there's still plenty of time and usually around game number four going into game number five that's when we start to look at all the math and that's when things sometimes get weird and the games start to excel and the fe the pace starts to pick it up a little bit but knights they land right next to where tsm is they are going to be fragment west we all know tsm is a fragment east side and we did see tsm start to pressure knights earlier in the previous game too which i think is extremely interesting they ended up backing off and eventually those were the same two teams that met it in that final circle taking a look at this zone oh man that zone screams over towards that respawn beacon you could see all the way towards that north hand side teams like c9 are going to be loving that one complexity going to be loving that one as well climatizer the loot isn't so hot the rotation isn't so hot especially because we've seen so many southern zones but here's the opportunity here for these teams to now have that northern zone that they've been looking for. Yeah, C9 are really good at controlling their drop, but when we do see rings pulled directly onto climbers at Tizer, they do really well, but complexity end up being the ones that most often get dominance over the train tracks all the way in the far north that are so powerful when you get into the later stages of the game. Well, we take a look at which teams end up taking that position, we've also got to start thinking about who's going to run into who, especially around rotations like Geyser and even like Landslide as teams funnel in from the south, because there are a lot of choke points in between the south end of the map and the north end where you can get caught and where teams can start to camp you a squad like uh vizio that has already landed over at landslide has the opportunity to but instead have opted into an early rotation and i wonder if they're the only ones if you can have a caustic lineup in this zone you're almost guaranteed top three you should be guaranteed top three and you're almost guaranteed a win 
because there's over a 75% chance that this zone continues to pull heavy north on over towards where that respawn beacon is. So I'm thinking Monsoon. I'm thinking Monsoon is definitely a player to keep an eye out for complexity moving forward. I think they're going to be the first team to go and rotate over there. The thing is about that situation in that spot is there's three teams that can coexist near you. There's another team that can come and peek out outside of the train. And there's going to be a handful of teams over towards Survey. And then there will also be a team like C9 who most likely plays on the back wall of the mountain across from the train tracks as they start to make their way over too. So we'll see how these pro players elect to go about this one. This is probably one of the more popular and common zones in terms of longevity that we've seen in the beginning of competitive apex so these players have a lot of experience on how to approach this we'll see how it ends up working out for them vizio despite their experience are running pretty low on the shields weren't able to pick anything too nice up early on and even this their standard black market around this time won't be able to take away the uh the little bit of treasure from the vault that it normally does, which normally gives us at least a nice gold shield on Fury. Instead, they're still very much running low on everything and are going to need to use this triple take, even with its very low sights, this low visibility, to try and pick themselves up some more Evos before we get into the late game, because you talked about the train tracks up to the north. This train tunnel can be even more contested by teams that come over from Skyhook. They're interested in getting inside of survey because they're not feeling too safe with gray armors. If they get armor checked inside of the train tunnel, that's going to mean that another team is going to go and push them. Not only that, you're not healthy enough to fend off a third party. So getting inside of one of these buildings is definitely a play. They're even interested in skyward diving there, even though wow. it's not that far away. So it gives them visibility. It gives them an opportunity to go and see who's in the area. But I wouldn't... You know, I wouldn't even play this building if I was them, unless they feel like the zone's going to pull over here. I feel like it could have been safer for them to go on the very outside. But again, it's a gray armor situation. If you have gray armors, you have to sit inside. You have to get chunks of damage so you can continue to try to lay and get that Evo shield charge right back up. Meanwhile, Team Intel looks like they're going to be playing that spot that we were hoping for. This is that back area where you're going to have your entire mountainside safe, and then you just keep all that action directly in front of you. I think this is a great position for Intel to be in. It's sort of crazy that they've been able to steal this away as well, because as good as it is, you'd think that other teams have been prioritizing it, and already there's a lot of pressure laid down on Intel as everybody goes, hey, wait, that was supposed to be my spot as we approach into the late game. Moody going to have to defend with this wing. Metal, but Intel seem to have stabilized for now, much like we saw Vizio do earlier. TSM in a fight over by Overlook, though, are trying to take a different approach to this and may have been running into C9. If both these teams tried to take a late rotation, we're going to find out who it is in just a moment but Verholz he finds out first it is in fact C9 but he finds that out a little bit too late as he goes down and now it's up to Hal once again with this PK to find the win seems like right now he's doing just fine not his healing up Hal is getting the chance to reset oh, no. right now and it is going to be that honorable 1v1 that's such a big misclaimer though because that's going to allow the armor swap to come through so close to be able to get that finish. Scan comes up in two seconds. He does have an idea of where Hal's gonna be, but there's that purple armor swap that we were talking about, and this is so tough to go and deal with now. Hal is weak, Naughty's weak. You can see the health HP difference too, as now the med kit's gonna go and get hit. So advantage on over to Naughty. It looks like he has just a sliver of extra health. He's also gonna be hitting that res, but I like the idea of the thermite. Will that get the re-knock? It does, that's on El Brilli. However, he griefed his own door, so that's going to help the scan come back on through. Problem is, if you go for the knocks right here, if you're naughty, that is going to mean that you have to reload. So I would have loved to see a potential cell oh, being no. hit, but he's just going to full oh. send. 71 headshot, jumping headshot right there, LeBron style. Very nicely done from naughty. C9 going to drop TSM. Now the opportunity for other teams to take over that first place spot exists. That was honestly so sick to see. And now, like you mentioned, Cloud9 have opened the door not just for themselves, but for everyone else. The door may be closing on Intel, though, if they're not careful. This portal have, has left them very exposed. But nonetheless, Cody feeling confident playing up on this high ground right now. We'll still be finding extra bits of damage. You can only imagine the econ from Team Intel is starting to run low, though. So they'd like to find these kills sooner rather than later before they get sandwiched in between these two squads with absolutely no heals. Portal still around. Petty Boss playing the heels for right now does have quite a bit of safety inside of this train cart. The train carts, though, are caustic land, so you got to be extremely careful on how you want to go about this 
area as you continue to try to add pressure on over here. Taking a look at Petty Boss again. They are running low on heels. So that shot right there, just a little 75, is going to cost him over half of the cells that he has. I believe he has five, but he's going to have to use three to get back on over to full health. So now they're just going to back off and say, hey, this isn't worth it. We have to reevaluate the situation. Maybe we could find a fight a little bit later down the road. It is insane to see something like that go down where now, of course, your your econ does take the big hit. Blue helmet as well, pretty good, but you'd like to see just a little bit better there, especially because of the way their econ has been sorting out. We started thinking about other teams as well who are in the area who could take advantage of situations like that. And I'm definitely thinking of Team Vizio who have got that Loba for a little bit of extra sustain, especially inside of the mid game. I want to check in on them and see how their shields are going and what their positioning is looking like as we start approaching later and later on, and as we go further and further north, this zone is relentless in how it pulls. Yeah, this is the zone that's going to continue to pull on up over there, so no doubt about it. The teams that are locking this area down, like Team Intel, they're loving the situation. I'm surprised that no one even has made their way towards the respawn area yet to start setting up Caustic, because maybe they think that it's going to pull a little bit further away, but who knows? It could be just the current meta, and things along those lines, but one of the teams that I'm really interested in is Complexity, because Complexity had the pick of the litter in terms of where they were going to go and set up. Meanwhile, Lazarus is getting into a big fight, massive damage all over the place, nade being thrown, but that's not going to be enough. That's going to be Rakanishu, Impulse coming in with the Nox, and Noble making quick work of Lazarus. They take almost no damage doing that as well, so this reset is easy as you like. They get three additional KP, but now have to fight off another squad. The Mastiff at short range does do a lot of work, though, and Complexity, who should have been our kings in the north, are going to end up falling to Noble if they're not careful. Rack now the last one left alive, should be able to get a shield swap here, picks up that additional blue, and no additional shields inside of this card. Should mean that he wins it, but he doesn't get to Complexity. How does Reptar pull that off? Reptar did a great job of using the knockdown shields that both of his teammates provided him. But hello, looks like the third party is starting to come in. Perfect execution in terms of the third party. That's going to be the finish there. And Albrelelli going to go and get rewarded with some extra kill points along the way, making it look as easy as possible. 100 damage right to the dome. That's the second squad wipe for C9. Although it was only, I believe it was two kills this time for them. C9 already off on a roll. And we talked about how well they need to be able to control this northern zone. Make this worth their while. Especially with a rough start to the day. Nerf in the meantime have had a pretty decent one. But pushing in from this south end end up encountering a little bit of resistance at their backs perhaps trying to gatekeep and like you said it is caustic land so as soon as you see that you got to get out and you also had the nox gas grenade i believe that was used by blight just to give them a little extra damage and a little bit less visibility for the enemy squad but i like that idea go and add pressure get that cooldown on the enemy team gone and then you could live the fight another day because you know these barrels do you take a little bit while to come back? And that's why you said Blight is like, all right, we're going to try to toss this one a little bit further, try to own a little bit more real estate, and then we're going to approach this situation. But you can see they don't have the armor advantage, and that's starting to worry them. While that's happening, there are two teams on both sides of the tunnel. So if you don't have Caustic here, there's absolutely no way you could rock this. So it really comes down to Blight and where he places these barrels and how they're able to hit their shots around the corner. Unfortunately, yeah. barrels are all being taken out. The enemy team is starting to push forward from behind. The other team's starting to push forward and get rid of those barrels too. And it's just a matter of time before Splash ends up having to fight, if not one, both teams. I like the warning shots from this R99. Even still on the Caustic with no barrels, he's trying to keep his team intimidating at the very least. Gets one back, but like you talk about, the placement of the barrels is so ridiculously important. It's the thing that's put them in the hole up until right now. Draco seems to have noticed that their backsides may be clear at the moment. Spots one more, though, and nobody's going to let you leave here, even as the zone closes in. Splash are going to start tanking zone damage very shortly if they're not careful. Not quite sure how they're going to get out of the situation. I mean, this is a tough spot to be in. You have two minutes, ten seconds to make your decision. And every single time that you continue to peek out, you're hoping and praying that you're going to land some damage, but you see Blight just peaks for a split second ends up getting ripped apart. Meanwhile, Liquid, they are literally going Legend Roulette through all this. They have not kept the same composition in all three games. Meanwhile, Nocturnal has played a handful of different Legends. Fun's played 
two different fuse gains, and now he's going to be going on Rampart. Does have Sheila, but that ends up being his cooldown, and now it looks like it's only up to the fences to try to lay them cover. But double fence, double defense, triple defense, this, uh, this, they, they could be onto something. We'll see. I'm still worried about the rotations and lack of Giddy Bubble. Uh, yeah, they, this requires that they actually get inside of the ring, and with them currently being gate kept, things are looking rough. I am, however, a massive fan of the Rampart, so I'm happy at least on an on a emotional level that we get to see it. With Splash, however, not happy at all. These are the ones caught in the no-win scenario earlier. They end up going down so, so quickly with Nerf able to pick them up. They still lose one to remember that third party was coming through the tunnel as well and now find themselves at a disadvantage quickly have to run for their lives. Messiah is going to channel that ultimate. It should be enough to keep Nerf alive until later on. They pick up a few KP, but it comes at a massive cost. And look where they're going. They could find themselves up against Team Liquid. This is definitely the play, getting out of there, maybe going on over towards the sniper post, which is going to be the play. You are going to have to deal with the team that is inside the tunnel, though, and you are going to have to be aware of G2 still coming in from behind you. But what great patience there from G2, waiting for Splash and Nerf to kind of duke that one out, immediately turns, gets dropped because he took, took a decent amount of damage. But there was no hesitation in that collapse coming in from G2. As soon as they realized that Splash started to move up a little bit, they carried that momentum forward and then got that extra kill point. But still a lot to be done in terms of where are these teams going to go. Bubble has to be used. You don't have any ultimate excels right here for Messiah. It's definitely going to have to be a trek, and I'm not quite sure if Nerf has it in him with just two players on their team. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so, but you no know, crazier things have happened, and with Team Liquid taking the pot shots at them, they at least seem to be dodging pretty well, but Fearing Live does go down 2G2, who are heavily on the push right now. And Team Liquid, interestingly enough, have ended up coming all the way down here to get in on the action. I love the way that they are playing this once again, but it will require some serious outplays, especially because they've got not one, not two, but three squads to contend with in the area. This is, again, I love how they're playing it, but this is where you really struggle without a Valkyrie, and I would love to see someone on this team, whether it's Nocturnal or whatever, someone utilize that legend so they can get scans, they can get information, they can get out of these really cruddy situations because this zone is just oh, yeah. going to tick them apart, and they really don't seem to show any signs of moving. This is a very unorthodox play from Team Liquid. I want to see how far this gets them because at this point, that, that's that's just the thing, right? You are limit testing with these uh, compositions that by no means should be working, but this position should what be, again, by all means, terrible for Esports Arena. Get, they are getting shot from every possible direction and can't dip into the ring. Duplex has to play the knockdown shields right now, and it's the best person to be alive. We'll have the dome in 18 seconds. If you can buy a little bit more space for your squad, you will be able to get them up. But that defensive bombardment gets canceled in favor of a medkit. And it may be the thing that ultimately kills all of Esports Arena as they end up going down here. It's going to be 100 thieves that clean up on the back end and get themselves three additional KP and plenty of loot to work with. Definitely feel like it was defensive bombardment into the heal so you could buy a little bit more time to go and heal instead. Buy time to go and get the bubble up too. Maybe try to force the action just a little bit more. However, Amu, if I'm not mistaken, got a two for one with that longbow because it looked like knocks happened. Unless it was just back to back pop shots, that was impressive coming in from Anmu. But what a grenade that was thrown! As soon as Esports Arena started to rotate, there was just a frag grenade that just sent them to their absolute. And meanwhile, he wanted to hop on board Vizio. Here they are, and it's not looking too solid as it looks like Six Madness are going to be the first two to get some knocks. And there's the final player, Panders. Sliding in for the cleanup. Very nicely executed coming in from Ghost. Yes, Madness took a decent amount of damage, but they have the reset, they have the bubble, and now they get a lot of loot. And now as Ghost, you can breathe as well. You've ended up picking up these three kills, but more importantly, you've got a space that is really nicely far in the north. Madness has the portal available, and there's plenty of cover to work with. This is where I think Ghost should excel, especially with the recent pickup of Madness. Uh, these guys have two incredibly intelligent IGLs and should be able to maneuver the positioning in the late game to their favor, but 100 Thieves can disrupt them. We've got another Valkyrie squad taking off as well. 100 Thieves are actually going to land right next door to Ghost if they're not careful. And they end up taking the sort of no man's land right near this respawn beacon that you were talking about earlier to try and play for the late game. Vayne didn't get the memo though. They landed in between the little gully here. This little crevice is trying to keep them alive as long as possible. 
Desperation ping is going down all over the place. They don't have their Ash Ultimate to try to get out of here. Already used the Valkyrie redeploy. We saw that one coming in from Skyward Dive from Vayne. Scurry, I'm not sure what's up with his defensive environment or his bubble, but this spot, while it looks safe, shouldn't be a spot that you could actually go and held. However, they're making it work. They're going to find C9. The kill feed is blowing up all over the place. CLG is going to get eliminated. Players from Knights are going down. They're going to fight with X set. Meanwhile, that's going to be the finish as x going to go and get them. And then you have Razor on top of Renegade's Intel getting involved as well. Squad's just dropping left and right. This is insane to watch in that mid game as, uh, like you say, 100 Thieves are able to capitalize quite well and now get to continue doing it. A very weird landing spot puts them in a sticky situation, but it's exactly the kind of spot that you wouldn't expect teams to be in. It lets them succeed for now with Anmu getting chunked out, though. He's got to pop that shield. Bat, Bat and Razor are right next door to them, already having taken down some members. It's Anmu against the world, and he's on this high ground, taking on, picking another 1v3 with a different squad across the way to see if he's able to survive this he's able to get his teammates back in the game because hundred thieves aren't out yet amu is doing a great job of ratting this one out he's playing the backside of the zone he got a knock onto albra lily as well but however scurry does get taken down now amu having to all, all the way over towards the high ground can he make it towards this rock so close what a job by amu i mean if everyone was sticking shoulder to shoulder with him they may be onto something but renegades now Look at the amount of death boxes that they have. You really don't even need to hit a cell right there with so many different armor swaps happening. Not at all. They've got everything that Cloud9 accrued from two different squad takedowns. And with that, they've got an excellent position in the ring as well. Plenty of covered work with around these rocks. But remember, we talked about Ghost's positioning earlier and how it should be perfect. Well, it has been so far. They ended up picking up that knock on Anmu. But now, they're the ones that get pushed back by a nicely timed defensive bombardment. They should be able to retake this hype, but it has cost them crucial momentum. Letting other squads start to walk up here. Team Razor starting to continue test for this hype that otherwise was ghosts now you can see the importance of getting to the opposite side of this train tracks to try to keep all that action directly in front of you nobody's really done it better than ghosts this team intel is going to be dropped that's going to be renegades and pow picking up a couple of knocks and pow is oh. sitting towards the top 10 of the leaderboard in all of the kills for this algs split so not surprising to see him popping off so six is going to come back through malice answering right back on to panders and now madness and six going to have to duke this out it's just a two-person squad, but it is a straight-up two-on-two as the Thirst is going to come through. That does cost him a little bit. The damage doesn't matter. PK shots looking pretty solid overall. Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Madness coming around the corner trying to do whatever he can, but he's eating some serious gas. And now it looks like it's all Renegades as they have the advantage and push that one. Renegades taking game number three. What a job by Pau coming through and getting a couple of additional knocks. Yes, they did lose one player when it was all said and done, but they forced the action into one another. And that's what you want to do in that type of zone. Keep all that action in front of you. Force other teams to make mistakes. A couple of players overextended here and there. They got to split from their teammates and they got punished for that one. Three different games, three different winners. It's, it's really incredible to see at this point, and the nice thing is that with all of them being pro teams, the bar is still being set very high for our partnered squads. None of them have found success just yet, despite them getting tantalizingly close with Team Razor coming in third just there. Can they do it on the very first day? Can somebody win a single game as the partnered squads? Will they have to wait till next week? The one way to find out is to send ourselves to a very short break before we come back with the last three games of the day.
Series E 10K. Yeah. Uh, well, Team Esports Rain, I had a chat with Team Esports Rain this morning, and they uh, pretty much said it was uh, pretty much in the bag. In so. the bag? I don't know if it's counting, but you know, first place Pro League, ever heard of them? <laughs> <laughs> Twitch. Dot TV forward slash esports. We're gonna tune in. $10,000 prize pool on the line. We're starting in what? Half hour? There we go. Let's do it. Yeah. Putting my face on, don't mind me. Yep. Welcome to the Series e Event 10K Invitational. My name is Jay, so I will be your host today. I'm joined by the man himself, the CEO and founder of Esports Arena. <laughs> Welcome all of you beautiful people to the Series e Event. Our top four squads from Season 3 will be joined in this lobby by 17 of the best North American squads. And like we said, we have $10,000 on the line. Higher map now, exit up top. You can see their ammo is struggling just a bit, but they're bomb at not trying to secure these knots. And now they will start dropping down onto the rest of the team. Duplex has fallen, exit might be the only full healthy team. And now Team Pringles on the other side of this one. Liquid getting knocked down. Excuse me, Exit getting knocked down. Liquid are the only ones remaining, and Team Pringles. to try and finish this one off. Clarify does not have his Nox Gas Grenade just yet 9% off as he gets focused down. It's a 3v2. X set will not be able to get the win here as SSG with the 3v1 will finish him off and take game number two. Uh, my thoughts so far are that Team Liquid is cracked. Team Liquid's cracked. Yeah, I've been, I've been really enjoying watching them play. I was just like, I was stalking them the whole game. I like, I like Bane. I'm not the very end. Oh, all these are the three. What is that? There's another team there, I think. So look for that one, Justin. I think it's, uh, it's, it's Liquid, but Cody, but CMP's coming in. So CMP on one. Line. Pushes out onto him, gets the knock, but there is the trade back from Mooney, and they will be able to secure the rest of the kills on. Kills gonna have uh, Esports Arena on two. Tyler, who's gonna get first? They can find the opportunity. Furia, because, you know, Tech's my favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> I said it at the beginning of the show, and I'll say it again. Complexity's gonna win. Easy clap. Complexity in the 3v3. CLG inside the card now, and it's just a matter of time as they eat that damage. Complexity are just trying to secure these kill points. The port has been used by CLG. The gas is there for them. They lose out on Monsoon, but the fight is all complexity. My boys, athletes, TV Sports Arena, they're winning. NRG, baby. NRG have that high ground angle. They have priority on this zone. Oh, 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 oh. With this off angle, though, are seeing all the action happening in front of them. Right on top of Team Liquid, though, with the motor, the fire ring from energy is going to let them know everything happening right here. You see the grenades being sent out. Look how many Doug has four more grenades he can work with. He's putting on so much damage. This is ridiculous, and it's going to be all NRG at this point. One of the CMP, Mooney will fall shortly as well, and NRG have not lost a single player. It's going to be a quick reset out from them. As Sweet uses that gravity lift to try and get a higher ground angle, and Nathan's getting involved in this. Nate's going in as well. Doug pushes up. He's going to get another yes. one into oh, that bubble. Come on, now Nathan might actually fall for this. And now NRG. It's been an incredible day of games, a super exciting finish there, a wonderful close uh, to the action here today. That's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Thank you so idea. much for joining us here today. For myself, Tyler, the entire live broadcast crew, everybody here at Esports Arena. Yes, Thank, Thank you, you all so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.
What's up, everyone? We're halfway through our first pro night of Series E Apex Legends season number four, and it's been a hell of a showing so far. We've got three different winners so far. We kicked it off with Team Esports Arena, followed it up with our good friends over at Knights, and now Renegades take game number three. It'll obviously make the run to the finish here with three more games ahead of us. Very, very interesting. But let's check out our third player of the game here for tonight, and it's going to go to Pow Pow here. Four kills. And two assists, not a ton in the damage department, just short of 800 here, but Renegade's getting it done. And obviously, and it's something I highlighted a ton all throughout last season, and I will continue to talk about it here. When you get into those late circles, if you can be the team to third party, you have an extreme advantage. And Renegade's in that final fight was the only squad with a full three, and it just meant that they were so much stronger going into that opportunity. They take advantage of it and grab the victory and grab themselves Quite a solid chunk of points there. We'll have to see how that shakes things up on the Mobile One leaderboard, but it's obviously going to be a very fun run to the finish. TSM was feeling really good. They were sitting at the top after two games, and we'll have to see if they are in that same position here after three. Do want to remind you guys, obviously, we're doing this awesome giveaway. You may have seen the commercial a couple times on the show. We've got an awesome Intel swag pack for you, and if you want to win it, just hit exclamation point giveaway in Twitch chat right now. It'll give you all the information that you need. You're going to want to get in on that because otherwise, I'm going to take that swag pack home. I'm going to be super cozy in that blanket using that new mouse mat, so definitely make sure to check that out with exclamation point giveaway. We're going to go to a quick break, though, right now when we come back. Dia and Tom will get you ready for the second half of Series E Pro Night. I 
not see what I see Tell me, where are you looking? There's no way that you cannot see what I see And tell me, where are you looking? There's no way that you cannot see what I see I'm going left, I need you by my side I'm going left, why you're always on the right Don't decide, I just need you to barely try now I fry, I just need you to not die There's one left, I need you to win this fight You should have rest, lose like this every time Go ahead and cry, you're not getting better This isn't fine, we can't play together Halftime is over and we are back, baby, back with more Apex Legends for you viewers at home. Tom, we have had a great time just earlier today. Three different games and like you said, three different winners with Renegades taking away the most recent victory. They've started to put themselves in contention for a top squad and it's surprising to see, especially because they land tree and ended up winning a northern zone, which is very hard to do. It is, but it was really weird to watch teams that should have been taking priority positions like Complexity or C9 not take those spots. Let's take a look at the Mobile One leaderboard and see exactly where everyone's kind of stacking up because I thought that there was a lot of misplays in the way that they were approaching this zone. I think that everyone knew that it was going to continue to pull north over towards the respawn beacon, but a lot of players and teams got greedy for kills and tried to do some gatekeeping. However, in the Valkyrie meta, gatekeeping sometimes doesn't work out as well as you would hope for because they just start flying over your head. Yeah, there, there was one point where I think we saw like two or three different Valkyrie ults as we approached Zone 5 that definitely threw everything into chaos. Among all that chaos, though, Ghost Gaming did do pretty well. I was impressed with their performance coming up towards the north, and now we finally got those Mobile One leaderboards to see how it ended up stacking up for them. Ghost to end up taking the lead there. 32 points in the day so far, and if they double that up, they can make it to 60 by the end of the night, but Renegades are hot on their tail but the thing is is 32 points is still within one game's worth of grasp so anybody could still come back here clg complexity splash lazarus noble liquid teams that are on the bottom side of this leaderboard can still get it done but they have to get something done here and go number uh game number four and game number five which i believe is starting here very shortly if not now but ghost gaming has been playing phenomenal so far and i love the way that they've been going through their approaches and through their checklists, their mental checklists, as we do have the dropship and the players flying down. It is game number four here on our first pro day here in the new Series E season. I'm liking the way that it's started off so far. I'm recalling all the fun we had last time, but this time things are going to look a little bit different. It's not the teams from the south that will have to go through the choke points. Instead, it is the teams from the north as we're pulling down all the way into esports arena territory. It's time for Lava City. Yeah, Lava City looks like a potential spot. If we could get the map overview, we could find out exactly where this one could be. But you know when you get that second scan and you find out that you're in the zone, that is a beautiful thing for these teams on that south-hand side. So out of four games, three southern zones, one northern zone. It's kind of been the tale of Apex over the last couple months. <clears throat> get, a, get a chance to cast a lot of Apex in terms of Esports Arena and also the ALGS. And it's just been a common reoccurring theme is this one is – a little bit hard to say where exactly it's going to go. I I'm really looking at maybe that respawn area inside of the dome between Big Mod and Lava City. There are some zones that will continue to pull out there, but we may have something exciting going on in zone number three and number four in terms of a bounce of the zone. So we'll have to find out yeah. who is going to get that big scan onto zone number three. If I was... Team Esports Arena, you do have the opportunity to hit the scan on Big Mod, so that could be a spot of contention. They may try to take that, control that respawn, or control that beacon, and then play off the information that they get from there because they're going to be the team closest to the next zone with the most information. So this is an opportunity for Esports Arena to hop back into first place. And interestingly enough, the team just to the north of them will have some interesting decisions to make as well. Noble, I don't believe, have the beacon. This time, going to operate on very little information, which kind of stinks for them. Normally, they'll leave Impulse over at No Name to try and gather that l little bit of extra data. But now, operating, flying kind of blind, they're going to have a lot of teams rotating through their POI. And they don't know where these teams are going, which may end up really harming them in the long run. As Xset have already started their rotation up, we know 
that Dropping Harvester, they've got this scan, and you can see it on their maps right now, and end up deciding that Lava Siphon is where they'd like to, if not rotate through, likely stay, because there's a good chance that especially up north in Lava Siphon is a nice area to be in later on in these ranks. Looking at everybody's weapons, and they're looking good, but I think it's Klain who is sitting on like 40 light ammo now, so you're going to have to find someone's Loba black market or talk to your boy Hal, because you know Hal's always got that light <laughs> ammo on deck, but he's giving tough it away. situation to be in. Yeah, he's giving it away. He's basically giving <laughs> it away at this point. Maybe maybe talk to your boy Reps. Reps seems like he's stacking all the light ammo in the lobby right now with about 300 shots already in the first minute and a half into the game, but this is what we saw from TSM previously, where they decided that they wanted to go and pressure this just a little bit more and continue to push up and somehow they've walked away with dark blue armors. I'm not sure if that's better than the light blue armors. So maybe this is a new Apex update that happened during <laughs> halftime. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh, Tom, you and you and your perfect vision. I'm looking at this going. Yep, this is the colorblind mode that I play. It's so this is uh, this is a little bit a, a little bit of. Uh, I guess, diversity for the viewers back at home. If you had been struggling to follow along so far, now you finally get to see all the colors in full HD perfection. With TSM taking this rotate, though, you mentioned that it's odd, and you know what? I It, it is even more so than it would initially seem because they've got the zone read as well. They could have gone down south, but the pressure that they've applied has been continuous, and it seems like they've really prioritized this crafting over anything else, making sure that they have those resources moving into the minigame that otherwise I think TSM is characterized by not having. TSM has always been one of two things. They've either been a team that gets directly into the middle of the zone or they kind of play the edge. And when you're rocking Bloodhound, you tend to want to take more fights and you want to play the edge. And crafting is a big deal if you are going to play the edge. So it makes complete sense for them to try to go and do this one. You don't want to be stuck down there with maybe only one battery, having a handful of batteries, maybe four batteries when it's all said and done for each player on your team is the ideal situation in these tournament scenarios over here. Triple purples coming in for 100 Thieves, so they're liking their position. They also have that beacon scan directly above them if they want to continue to go and milk that one. But it looks like there's uh, two teams coming in this vicinity. There could be an opportunity to pinch over here is, looks like Scissors, Phony, and Fury are going to be the first team to drop Boogie Bomb Bill 23. I forgot who is smurfing on Excellent. that one, but you really can't take that name seriously, let's be honest with you. No, you can't, and and yet it does end up costing you the fact that it was uh, that it was difficult to keep track of our boogie bomb boy because at this point uh, he's he's already picked up three kills for X Head and is looking real real good so far. Esports Arena doing exactly what you called for, looking good themselves, controlling big mod for the moment. With round one only a minute forty away from closing, they should be able to get that next scan and likely leave if they absolutely need to. This is a proactive squad that does want to find themselves if not directly in the center of ring certainly around a building it's why they picked up the caustic and exactly why they're able to hold a building like this now Ooh, nice shots there triple take with the two four two four scope just so fun to utilize on all of these weapons another fight happening lazarus find themselves in a big fight going up against splash z davis with some really nice shots but they've lost out on dank who i've been so impressed oh. with Throw all these skirmishes, but Blight masterfully using that knockdown shield. Great grenade there is going to answer and respond in a nice flank over through the door, but it doesn't matter because Blight is surviving. Phoenix is there as well. Could really use a Phoenix in that situation. But they got a little bit of help from the teams on the outside, and now Complexity giveth, Complexity taketh. How the heck did they get here so fast? It had to be Reptar with that Skyward Dive, and now you can see they are just in a tough situation to go and work with gold bag now coming through still fending off players on over towards the side complexity moving booting and scooting i mean i was a little upset that they didn't take the god spot in game number three but i like this position i like the aggressiveness going into game number four they find themselves right next door to knights as well with that black market to pick up whatever loot they need this should be a relatively peaceful spot for them 13 seconds away from getting that next extra bit of juicy data on whether this is going to be one that scales nicely as well because this fence line actually has quite a few endings right near it i'd almost forgotten about the zone that pulls almost directly underneath this bridge that reptar is looking at right now and there's a very good chance that being able to hold that down will be their recipe for success 
with complexity covering so much area though you can really feel the confidence that they have because spreading out like this allows you to get so much more damage and potentially pick up so many more kills but it should be exposing you to a lot more risk than you normally would incur but this is what ex is exciting about this composition is it allows three individually skilled players to work together as a team by taking different angles. And that's what I'm worried about with Team Liquid is they're also individually skilled. You switch on over to their screens and you see them just completely ripping players apart. But yeah, they're playing all these troll compositions. Watson is just so difficult to go and escape from. Burlst, he's not playing Valkyrie. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. He's so used to going and taking angles and playing aggressive. That's a time where Valkyrie would escape. Instead, Beast of the Hunt gets popped. You see Thermite being popped right there for Hal. And you know that they're going to go and pressure this on the other side of C9. So it just didn't work out there for TSM. They had an opportunty to go. Oh my damn it! Coming huge, in from huge. Hal was ridiculous. But I mean, you are going up against a two versus three, and no matter the amount of damage, I don't think that's really going to work out. Naughty also taking off his shirt, giving it on over to Albrilli. A little swap of the jerseys over there, and they're going to be a okay. C9 have done it to ESA, they've done it to TSM right now, they're likely going to do it to several more squads, but just taking a 3v3 by Storm, and like you were talking about, that miss position was so, so crucial, as Xed now have moved their way all the way from over by Lava Siphon to down in the south end towards Dome. They are opting into a very hard edge play style, but it seems to be working for them so far, already having picked up three kills and looking for a few more, especially on top of this rock, Kenny does get shunked out loses his shields, but he can revisit that whenever he likes with the mobility of the Valkyrie. The plane is laying down the scouting for him as well, but he gets chunked out inside of the Crypto Drone. The Rampage almost finds a kill, but the Dome ends up stopping Kenny from taking that one fully. Turns into at least one knock on 2G2. Can they finish the full Thirst, or will Renegades be coming in for to join the party? Oh, the Spitfire recoil really getting the saucer right there. That's why they give that thing 55 shots overall. G2 not having the day that they were hoping for. They're going to get eliminated, especially in surprising after G2 had such great back-to-back -back days over the weekend for the ALGS. Saucer is going to go and put down that portal. Bubble was used on the other side, though. So this is a little bit of a weird situation because typically you want to go and stagger those. Instead, they both kind of panicked, but... It was the right play. Trying to save Saucer, you really need to. You don't know that he's going to instantly just portal throughout all of that. But defensive bombardment gets thrown down by Kim Chi Lee, and majority of that is going to be eaten by the mountainside over there. You can see it's not really connecting as he was hoping for, but the Thermite doing some serious work, burning two players, giving them armor cues, also showing where those players are going to be rotating. Yeah, this is a really, really nice couple ordinances from Exedron, from Krim Chi Lee, who now the backbone of this team rotating down to the south is going to drop, but doesn't quite get taken down all the way. So ridiculously low, but he's buying time for Krusen and this legendary wingman to put in the work. With them going so low, though, enemy and Kim Chi Lee have no shield. It is all up to Krusen at this point. He takes down one, takes down two, and somehow Exedron complete the wipe. It's just in the nick of time. Able to play Kim Chi Lee's shield. Krusen does have the port to try and get him out of harm's way, but Xed are not going to let that one go without a fight. Yeah, Boogie Bomb Bill, the triple B over <laughs> here, is looking for some serious damage. He's trying to set the record for kills over here. And I really like the way that they played that. However, the dome having to go down and them being in a desperate situation down low is not an ideal situation. Meanwhile, fun. Curious what legend he's playing. I mean, are they just going for the all random legends? But this time he's rocking the charge rifle, getting that knock onto CLG Vatro. And we've seen just how important the rampage is. Really being a replacement of the scout, almost a stronger version as teams just ripping across the map with that one. R301 PK with the 2X. That would be my go to in terms of the tournament scenario. Love to see that coming through. But Knights, they've had a phenomenal day so far, and they're continuing to rip the damage in from behind. Joey Blackout, the new addition to his team, with Guild and the Sur have been doing so well. They've also done a great job of adapting to the meta with the current big boy combo. Gibraltar, Caustic, and Valkyrie. Cruising somehow is staying alive while getting shot from so many different angles. It's the knockdown shields, but Boogie Bomb Bill says no.
After being knocked earlier as well, it's a good thing the Knights bought him that extra little bit of space so he could keep the roll going. Xset have been dominating with this, I, I want to say, new pickup is what we'll call it. But this guy is certainly ma I'm making me wonder who on earth it could possibly be behind a hilarious screen name. And as Xset retake the high ground, they're going to have opportunity to show him off even further because they control not just the caves, but the rotations in towards Lava City as well. This may very well be their recipe to success, but they're going to have to get inside Love City and expose themselves to a heck of a lot of damage on the way in. You called that zone perfectly T-squared right on top of the small zone to the north of Lava City. And that's why I love the way that Esports Arena is playing this, because a lot of this, and I'll repeat it again, is keeping the action in front of you. And what does that mean? That means that you're not getting sandwiched and you're giving yourself opportunities to see what every other team's doing so you're able to make a play off of that. And when we look at the late rotations coming through, you're gonna be able to get on top of that dome. And that is key for a lot of these Valkyrie teams. So we'll see which team is gonna be interested in doing that. Is that gonna be Esports Arena or is that gonna be somebody else just a little bit closer? But stuck inside a Lava City over here as this zone's gonna be closing, a lot of teams will start to fall now, but we've already had a just complete bloodbath already. Typically, you're going to see around 15, 16 squads for this zone. We're already down to 12. That is, oh, maybe dialing down to 11. Nice bit of damage comes in from above. And it's Team Liquid on the Valkyrie that you called for earlier. Starting to shape up now as they throw in even more off the missile barrage. Force the dome and do have the opportunity to drop down. But they're playing this one patient. And the defensive bombardment comes down on them from above. Forcing them to move. Maybe start to cut off this roster below them. Complexity still in a very difficult situation. And I love these barrels for Team Liquid keeping squads from coming up behind them unawares. Nerf looks like they're getting into a fight. A lot of times teams will coexist inside of these buildings. We used to see a lot of bloodhounds going through back and forth. And so I was like, wait, did that stick me? Should I run back to my teammate? Or am I good to get down and slide down these stairs? Meanwhile, Knights gets a knock right there onto Noble. Duplex is going to go and get the finish with the R301. So you know those two teams are within the vicinity. Meanwhile, the rest of Exet continues to heat up. They're wow. gonna drop Knights right there. Knights out in 11th place, but it's not done yet. Kenny's still trying to take down some more players. As you can see in that kill feed, things just blowing up all over the place. Right now, it's all up to Exet to continue to try to add on to this amazing kill total already. You can see five kills, three assists, 1200 damage, and we're just around halfway through this game. What are Exet on right now? What is happening with this team? They have been so quiet for the rest uh, for the rest of the games today, but somehow this time they're starting to pop off. It is amazing to see a roster that again has had some growing pains throughout the pro league season. Now in one of the best lobbies uh, that we could have for them, start to shine. It is just over that halftime, but they still have. Enough wiggle room to start to place themselves in the top three. Well, Nerf looking to do exactly the same thing down here in Lava City. I believe we'll have to vacate the premises once this ring starts closing. 27 seconds should take us heavily off to the north and including just the barest bit of this baby dome in front of them. We'll see who ends up winning this because when you pull out of Lava City, a lot of teams come with you. I like that call, a little baby dome, a little, little mini mini me dome that's sitting <laughs> yeah. there over over towards there. I'm curious to see who is going to be risky enough to go for that drop, which is just the biggest bait of a drop I've ever seen. All, all 24 players are going to be staring at that one, whoever makes their play. Now, this is the interesting spot again. Remember, the top of the mini dome is the key here, but you can't get there early you have to get there late, but you can't get there too late. So the timing is really, really complicated on these rotations. And Tia, uh, well, in, in the meantime, it's going to be C9 that are controlling that. We talked about that bait, though, of the care package. It's already happening. Nerf ended up going for it and seemed to be getting the best of Razor right now as they delete them. But in come Exit, and with that EMP, eliminate all safety that Nerf had previously. Now dropping behind, trying to play behind these small little bits of cover provided by the Caustic. They're not going to be safe inside of the ring. And Complexity will on the other side of this, laying down so much much damage as teams are forced to run into them. Other side of the map has C9 succeeding, taking chunks out of Intel, moving us down to the top seven squads, and that care package still untouched. 
Boogie Bomb still picking up some kills. I'm also excited to see Monsoon go on to Wraith instead of Caustic because his movement is just so ridiculous. And now he's going to be able to add more and more pressure, hit these quick armor swaps, get this loot, phase back to his team if he really goes and needs to. And what is inside? Is that a Kraber for complexity if they want to go and use that one? I would love to see Reptar or Shiny get that one. You can already see gold R301 basically there for a Monsoon. Massive in the back pocket. That's what you want on your Wraith. I mean, Reptar's Kraber is insane, so we'll get the chance to check in with him a little bit later, see if he's taking advantage of that, but in the meantime, Xset going up against another squad, end up being taken out entirely, Team Liquid Fall as well at the hands of C9, but C9 may have overextended, because ESA are on their tails, this zone is so tight, and like you talked about, the timing is perfect! not have just left themselves a little bit too far up creek with no paddle around the edge of this ring that ESA love to prey on. And it's not that big of a deal that ESA has been slow playing this because keep in mind that's how they won game number one and they're looking to be the first team to go with a repeat performance here and maybe win two out of four. That could be absolutely phenomenal for this squad. Gold helmet there on duplex, plenty of ammo to go and work with. Gold R301 as well. This guy it's got more gold than Mr. T out here. His stay naughty is just locking down underneath the bridge. Not an ideal situation as this zone will start to close. We'll find out if he is actually in here. I don't believe that he's going to be, but the way that he's kind of posted up makes you feel like he could be safe for now. Xset looks like they survived throughout all of that. They somehow maybe got some reses or worked their way back in over towards the zone. And now a lot of teams starting to pick little corners of their eggshell. And there's a lot of spots to go and work with over here. So don't be surprised to see if things continue to slow down for this zone. But Xset's not having any of it. Kenny's even sitting on an arc star somehow, some way. Is he going to be able to jetpack out of that one? Shiny going to pick up Petty Boss and drop one player. We also still have some more rats inside of this lobby, too. We know Naughty was alive. We'll see if he can continue to do things. Reptar picking up a Kraber knock onto Skittle Cakes. That's going to slow Esports Arena down. Temporarily, big grenade coming through from behind. We were wondering who was going to get that sniper rifle. It is going to be Reptar. So good with the Sentinel, so good with the Kraber. Now looking to put down some more damage, possibly on Team Esports Arena. That is knock, most likely in his view nobody's taken the high ground on the eggshells yet though yeah we are going to get a real treat here complexity looking up against exit right now exit likely the largest threat to them esports arena yes they're easy pickings on the low ground but if anybody's gonna be anybody's gonna take this game away from complexity it's going to be a flank with only four squads left and c9 on a rat we'll see how far they can make it but it really is a showdown between these big three and complexity need a little bit more cover provided to them a really nice crack comes in onto claim claim goes down this is complexity's opening and they know it as well as we do Complexity in such a good spot right now, but keep in mind, Naughty is in a decent spot too, because if they start to skirmish a little bit longer, and if Complexity gets weak, you can see that being an opportunity to go and push through here as that rat, and possibly win that one, and now you can see where he's located, and that player outline, all the teams from, all the players, excuse me, from Xset on this east hand side, but man, Reptar is just so scary with this Kraber, really could change the tide for either team with just one shot. As uh, the rat gets swiped, our Tomcat is on the prowl, and we're down to our top three squads. C9 are out, and it is between Complexity, the last remaining members of Xset, and ESA to make this game happen. As Xset eat it, uh, we're going to see if Complexity can survive. Still one remaining member for Xset, though, might be able to clutch this out. So both ESA and Complexity have to play carefully. They take out that rat, and now it is a 3v3 against each other. ESA clamor wow. over the wall throw down the dome and take the fight from the low ground and make it look so easy. Just amazing presence there from Caustic. That's how you do it. You just enter with the barrels. You enter with the Nox gas grenade, force the players into one another. You saw how much damage Esports Arena was taking. There was just constant Valkyrie missile barrages, nades on top of nades. They had to deal with Naughty from behind. Somehow, some way, when it's all said and done, they advanced to the mini dome instantly Plus, they're all full health. Plus, they have Nox gas grenades and all of their utility that they needed to do. It looked like Complexity was in perfect situation to go and win that game, but it was Esports Arena with the slow and methodical plays that paid off for them. And it's so hard to wait that out. It's so hard to have the competitive experience and the knowledge to know that you can win that game at that exact moment. It all came down to timing. And once again, Esports Arena, they found their second win of the day. Let's take a break, see how many points it got them right after this.
Welcome back, everybody. Team Esports Arena grabbing their second win of the night there. They kicked off the first half with a W, and they do the same here in the second half. They're able to take down Complexity and Xset there at the end and put another 12 points up on the board. Let's check out our next player of the game here, and I think I have an idea of who it's going to be, and I am right. It's going to be Duplex here. Seven kills and an assist. Just two damage short of 1,700, and obviously... I'm lucky enough I get to peek a little behind the scenes to see the stats. All three members of Team Esports Arena all had over 1,600 damage in the game. So a team effort for sure. Everybody putting out the DPS in this one. And they're able to you know, work through what was a bit of a tough late circle. We got a good look at Team Esports Arena having to deal with some Gibby Ultimates, having to res Skittle Cakes a few times there in that late circle. But they fight through that. They're able to pick up the C9 Rat and then get the third party push to close out the game. So well played for Team Esports Arena. Do want to remind you guys one more time, if you're looking to grab some new swag, maybe a Christmas present for a gamer in the family, go grab some Esports Arena stuff over at shop.esportsarena.com. We got some hats. We got the brand new Intel jerseys, as you can see behind me on the wall. So just head over there today. Again, it's shop.esportsarena.com. We're going to go to a quick break, but when we come back, game number five of the night on the other side. Like the 301 hum, bats of bullets like a chest to the armor falling off. Oh god, all those gas making you cough. Feeling classic when I drop, leave your body in a pile, let it rot. Shield sales got a lot. Watch you move, you a bot. Watch you fade like a thought. Skull town, where I bang. Watch your life, watch your train. Never get in off the train, never drop another game. Yeah. Ooh, like the 301 hum, bats of bullets like a chest to the armor falling off. Oh god, all those gas making you cough. Feeling classic when I drop, leave your body in a pile, let it rot. Shield sales got a lot. Watch you move, you a bot. Watch you fade like a thought. Skull town, where I bang. Watch your life, watch your train. Never get in off the train, never drop another game. Yeah. I'm feeling dirty, dirty, hit him with the 30, 30 Drop it with me, that's a 50, 50, and ain't ever learning Back to the lobby, got you playing sloppy Triple take, take your life away, we the third party Yeah, we all in, all in Yeah, we mobbing down the hill, and they falling, they falling I'm looting up their squad, yeah, they balling, I'm balling I told you we would get it, yeah, I called it, I called we it We keep on queuing up, we just can't get enough these winds are stacking up. Ops like a lake. Yeah, Welcome back, ladies and gents. We've had four games down today, and now we approach the penultimate one. Game five. It is do or die for a lot of these teams, as only this game can set you up within touching distance of one of those top spots if you've been having a rough day. And trust me, teams, some of these teams have been having a rough day. I've been sort of missing Team Exedron as they started off the day really well, but have got kind of gone quiet over the games three and four. I was more or less some someone stopped the kid in the pink shorts, okay? Because that guy is unstoppable. Who throws paper three times in a row? I'm just wondering <laughs> where he got his strategies because absolutely unstoppable playing like esports arena and rock paper scissors. Maybe we'll get a little tournament going on, but what an impressive performance right there! And I mean, winning two out of four games with a new roster with a stacked lobby is not easy to do. 
And hearing that they all had over 1,500, 1,600 damage is really impressive as well. Slow, methodical. That's how they played that one. They went on over from Lava City. They got their scan over towards Big Mod, continued to lock down Big Mod, and then pushed up over towards that side of the dome, which is a lot of times where teams will con will try to contest. And you saw that is where C9 was trying to go and push through. They got taken out. But just the way that they were able to survive for so long while being in this crazy four team battle with just one rat was really something to watch and it just goes to show how much experience they have yeah and, and it shows the diversity of the way that esports arena is comfortable playing as well i mean they are used to playing southern souls as many teams are but to play one at home takes a totally different skill set than it does to cross over into thermal station and play edge in that specific case and so i really like the way that they demonstrated that and definitely proved that no matter where the zone is going that it doesn't matter they've got the skill to be able to take games but complexity and x set definitely showed us a different side of them as well i was really impressed with complexity's control over lava city and x set's ability to really travel all the way from west to east and just frag out along the way yeah, and complexity going from north to south to take a look at the Mobile One leaderboard to find out exactly how many points these players put up on the board. And Xset coming through with that strong performance is going to get second place. But it's you know a no-brainer that after four games and getting two wins, that Esports Arena is going to be sitting at that top spot. But again, still, anybody's game going into game number five, very rarely do you see so many teams that close together. Once you get rid of these first two teams and you look at the rest of this leaderboard, it is so tight right there that it's anyone's game. And if we just take a look back at last game as well, I mean, Esports Arena, they came into it at 7th, and now TSM sitting at 7th is in a very similar situation. Surprisingly, TSM hasn't actually managed to win a game today, and Cloud9 right below them, despite destroying Esports Arena and TSM in different scenarios, you're taking 3v3, some of the most convincing we've ever seen, they are sputtering out in the mid-game, and if you can just close one out, you could find yourself in that first place spot it is that close but speaking of close speaking of those margins that are so important let's take a look at that mobile one high performance moment it's the end of the game it's that big win where esports arena decided to roll up and take it all to me it's all about skittle cakes because look what he does right there he gets a jerry springle springer love triangle of barrels just set up all around where monsoon is going and there's basically no option except to eat gas right there. And that's so difficult because now once you toss those barrels out, you make this like Bermuda Triangle. Next thing you know, you have your flat line perfectly lined up. You're not expecting them to get to that point so fast. So as soon as complexity got distracted, that's when they go and push up out of the line of sight. And then it's all Skittle Cakes right here. We don't have the moment of where he threw his Nox gas grenade to go and buy that time just to get to that point. But that was so impressive in its own too, to go and have that so well placed that it filtered complexity out, distorted their vision. And that's why they were able to advance. So again, we've seen some amazing, amazing caustic plays coming out from the esports arena team. But here it is, game number five. We know that there's going to be a couple of crazy fights to go and start this one. We had a lot of action in game number four. Expect the same thing in game number five. As always, kicking it off with our winners from the previous game. And it seems to be a common theme here of Noct getting that first scan for his team. All right, the four first ring even hits the board. We know that we're going up north again. This was Renegade's territory the sure. last time we went like this. But yeah, survey seems like it's going to be likely. And I'm hoping, I am praying, Tom, that we get some of the teams that actually land up north like Complexity with a really nice shot in an end game this time. And one of the teams that I'm looking at now that they've stopped trolling is Team Liquid because of the fact that they've switched on over to the typical composition. And when you're landing Trials, you really want to have Valkyrie, let's be honest, because it's just so far from everything and you don't really get a lot of endings that are happening over towards Trials and Skyhook anymore. Even Lava Fissure and Countdown is fairly rare, but we've seen a lot of zones going on over towards Lava Citadel, Lava Citadel, a lot of the Siphon launch site. This is our second zone that's going to be ending very close to one another on this north-hand side. Like you said, Renegades was able to win that one. Complexity really misplayed that one. So C9, Complexity, and Liquid, teams that I'm looking forward to have bounce back games here, will get blessed with this zone. But do not count out Ghost, who's going to be extremely excited to see this zone as well.
Oh yeah, they, they are going to be real hyped to be able to pop up here, see if they can get anything. They are hot on the tails of Team Vizio right now. Another squad that I'd like to keep an eye on, especially because uh, the way that they liked to play these zones yesterday now overlaps with Complexity's territory. Vizio loved taking the height outside of Epicenter, and now if... Uh, if it is the complexity choose to choose to do that, they won't have their power spot anymore, and that could affect them in untold ways. I want to see the adaptability tested from both of these squads. And TSM, another team that has definitely been adapting today, will we'll recall Verholst always on the Bloodhound, at least for now, had a weakness last game with lack of escape, and they've chosen to stick with it despite that shortcoming. See, I, I'm a thousand percent if if I'm playing with him, you know, these pro players know better than I do, but from my experience of watching Verholz just dominate, I'm putting him on Valkyrie, especially because the value that you just get from Valkyrie overall. Yes, you do get a recon scan coming in, and we've seen how well you can do with Bloodhound in certain situations, but there's a reason why only one Amiya team runs Bloodhound. It's just not as strong as it used to be, and we've seen, you know, Bloodhounds get replaced with Seer when Seer was extremely strong. We've seen a lot of different teams just get off of Bloodhound just in general. A nice little grief of the bot flying around in the air, just a blue bot. So most likely they shot that down to try to avoid Team Exet from getting anything. But Intel with the first redeploy that we're going to go and see, it's going to be Cody, Mooney, and Petty Boss making their way. And I believe Intel is in first in terms of our partner teams so far today. So they've been putting up a really good fight next to Team Excedrin. The rest of the partner teams on that right-hand side. But keep in mind, this is extremely stacked. You're seeing a lot of our top organizations on that right-hand side of the leaderboard as well. Yeah, it is a worrying time to try and fight through all of that. But Intel, with this position, have a good shot at being able to do so. They can look down at where Cloud9 initially drop over in Climatizer, control a lot of the fights over in Epicenter, and have a really nice angle into walking towards Survey Camp should the ring continue to pull there with the bit of cover provided by these rocks. It's a very flexible position, but one that doesn't net you that much KP unless other teams are opting into fights on their terms so definitely does come with a little bit of a little bit of worry i like this look from complexity though learning from last time they've once again opted into this high ground but a little bit earlier taking these train tracks to try and push into survey camp from a power position and i'm so surprised they didn't do this in the previous game where the zone pulled over here because this is the play you know 99 percent of the time you want to get on over here, but you do end up getting pinched coming in from both sides, and nothing is worse to get pinched with than a charge rifle. That's just going to cost you so many different cells. Fortunately, Reptar does have the gold armor, so they're going to be able to share some batteries with one another. However, Ghost Panders gets taken out by Razor on the rotation. This one's going quickly as Razor do end up having this caustic, plenty of room bought for them, so it's going to be difficult to push them, difficult to answer this back, even though I'm sure that Ghost want a little bit of revenge for their fallen comrade, should be able to get him up as well. We've still got 60 players in here, so Dome likely forced out, and Razor super duper comfortable over here in survey camp, although I'd like to see him a little bit closer to the doors. The fact is that by sitting back inside altogether behind these caustic barrels they can save themselves quite a bit of economy 12 shield cells may seem like a lot but we've got so much more zone to go and they're not going to be moving really they're more worried about ammo and that's why you can see them just afking basically inside of the building because we said survey and they're heavily favoring survey as well complexity they're looking for more kill opportunities that's why they're staying on the outsider survey they're trying to find more teams rotating in maybe they'll find a secluded fight over there maybe they can even take that fight and then win another third party that comes their way if anyone wants to get a little bit too greedy but vizio locking down the high hills of epicenter this is not an ideal situation ideally you'd want to already be inside of survey here but the experience from vizio is saying hey we're not gonna be able to make it in we've missed our rotation opportunity Let's just chill here. Even if we try to Valkyrie all in, it would just be a waste. We'd end up just griefing ourselves because there's other teams that are going to be closer. So this is what they were looking for. Little stragglers on the bottom. Oh. 120 damage coming in from Phony. He's going to charge that Evo shield right back on up. Charge rifle, just so useful. So easy to line those shots up. Still doing some big damage overall. And it's just so nice to get that Evo shield charged up to purple for Phony. 
Yeah, he is laying it down right now, and I really like this shield swap as well, giving everybody the opportunity. This is really good management of the shields. A, lo a lot of the times, it, you will see people just hang on to their shield when they get it charged up to purple, but because the distance between blue and purple is so much easier to crest, Boney now has the opportunity on this Gibraltar to once again farm up for his team, get them in a better spot, and he doesn't really have to worry about taking these extended trades with the shield economy, because remember, he has got a Loba on his side as well. I wonder what the amount of crouches you need to do to show peace here and just be like hey let's just trade a little bit of damage back and forth how much do you need on your evo shield i need 179 let's just hit each other a couple of times and then call it quits what do you say and if you're busy you don't really care because you will have that black market to go and exchange weapons if you go and really need to and if you want to continue to get more cells out of there more ammo that's going to be a-okay -okay as well interesting Grabbing the Massif instead of the PK is going to be one of the selections that Phony ends up going with. But this is the goal here for Vizio. They're just going to be waiting here for quite some time. This zone will end up playing out extremely slow, and you're already seeing that. So much different than the previous game. The teams are realizing, again, this is 1,000% going to be a survey zone. So the teams that are on the edge will continue to play the edge. When we move into zone number three and zone number four, once things start to get squished in a little bit more, that's when we'll see a lot more action. I had a suspicion earlier that TSM were going to try and play a little bit more edge. They seemed to be trying it out when Cloud9 caught them last game, and this is an interesting adaptation. Of course, uh, this is not the TSM that most people know, and we've seen them play zone quite a bit today, but going and sweeping out their backs, keeping themselves clear of danger, which is definitely what bit them last game, now gives them the opportunity to play this one out a little bit safer, and I like the way that they've adapted their playstyle, given the way that they know C9 has enjoyed playing things in the past. C9 still likely going to be by Overlook around now, searching for a few kills, while TL are doing much the same thing. They've picked up a very, very early Kraber. That is extremely early here. Going into zone number two, you typically don't see that come out. But with that being said, all these knocks would really not mean anything because you're not going to be able to follow up on that. And if you do get a knock, say, on the team that's closer to you, you would end up griefing yourself because bubble is going to go down. You'll end up taking a fight. Maybe one of your teammates ends up getting knocked, and then you end up getting third party. So there's a lot going into the trigger discipline here for Nocturnal. He's not looking to really charge up his Evo shield. It's already at purple. It's going to take a lot to get on over towards red. So he's looking for kill potential more than anything, or maybe looking to get involved with a third party if that opportunity presents itself. But there it is. Nerf finally getting on the board here and opening things up in game number five. Looks like they got a couple of knocks there onto Kim Chi Lee, another one onto enemy. So one more player on that team is going to be alive. But this is that edge fight that you were looking for on the TSM side. How finally getting one player in the sights, but that loot is not looking too solid. You don't have a mag on the R301. You're down to only five cells overall, 126 ammo. You have to go meet up with Vizio somewhere and try to find some extra loot. I mean, they're right next door, so hey, maybe TSM pops over and gives them a little bit of a visit as Nerf finish off our very first squad. Exedrin are out. And again, for a team that I was really, really excited about earlier on today when they started things off right, they've taken a sharp downturn in the latter half of the day with Nerf now able to heal up to full. They can hopefully continue this momentum, although it should be noted that with Fearing Live going down inside of that fight, they do have to be a little bit careful later on. Gibby is one of the most likely characters to go down in later fights because of all the bullets that he basically absorbs into his gravitational pull, but with that timer going down on his knock it means that he can go down and die even faster and that can be that can turn into a very risky situation uh rumors have it the next legend is going to be able to take those orange cones and hide underneath them and you'll start to see orange cones just kind of moving around the map <laughs> <laughs> i wish Imagine. that'd be awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah. little little toy story action <laughs> Yeah, we, I, I, I'm imagining the little spell in Dark Souls that turns you into a statue and you just walk around and try and invade people. <laughs> that is that is the gameplay that I need in Apex Legends. Yeah, I'd love to see it, right? You get a little, little trolling going on over here. Maybe maybe uh, we'll see something coming around Christmas. I know that they're going to probably put out some Winter Express stuff and some really trolly fun stuff coming out a little bit later down the road. But hello, anyone needs some batteries? 
Sai out here like the Energizer Bunny, just dropping them left and right for his squad. Popping an Alt Excel here for turns as well. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I feel like turns and team nerfs switched their composition. I could be wrong, but I feel like turns could have been playing something along the lines of Wraith before this. When it was all said and done, on board with G2, as we get a look at that scan, you can see still a handful of survey is going to still be in this one, but it does pull away from buildings uh, where Ghost Gaming is located. You can see Handers, Six, and Madness are not going to be inside of this next one. Meanwhile, you're going to see a couple other teams will be, so that's going to be some hard gatekeeping happening over towards the survey side. Teams like Complexity will also have to fight their way in. And they may, they're going to have to clear their backs as well. They've got a team coming up behind them. It was CLG up there that could be itching to take a fight. While TSM wrestled away this high ground, though, and in somehow an ingenious maneuver, they make themselves plenty of room inside of this lobby because a TSM on this high ground should be able to survive until the late game. TSM in the late game is definitely deadly. And the kill feed, Kraber connects, though, on to C9, potentially taking out one of our squads that has played upset again and again Let's this way. sometimes you'll see a beacon that will spawn up here to try to get a scan unfortunately for tsm that is not the case here they could have easily been able to bubble verholz and he could have gave information valuable information on where zone number four and zone number five would have been you know back on board with team liquid and nocturnal like you said kraber in hand they were able to get that knock and flush right there onto albrulli but you gotta be careful. Don't want to bite off more than they can chew. Have to check and continuously watch for the third parties coming in from behind. Meanwhile, Banner is going to be grabbed from the C9 side, and they are going to try to get out of there as fast as possible. Eyes on them. Ping's coming down as well as Nocturnal skips the loot box and looks for blood. Oh, lordy, lordy. Taken off in the face of a Kraber. Could be deadly. Oh. The shot is not going to connect. But Nocturnal, you know he had to go for it because the highlight would have been legendary. C9 managed to escape. But like you said, that beacon collection is big, but unlikely to result in a res at this point. There are so many squads that are going to be watching C9 as they drop. TL turning their attention on to TSM, but drawn back over towards climatizers they recognize that they are not out of the woods yet there are still plenty of squads quite literally gunning for them an early spitfire as well for team Vizio, and that's the power of the loba too sometimes is you continuously just get these weapons outside of the crates and you don't have to really worry that much about what the other teams are doing and that's what they've been banking on just big chilling up here waiting for their opportunities saw charge rifle in hand earlier xset Putting the hurting right there onto Esports Arena. Big, massive shots. That's going to be all played. Players who want to get this box. It looks like just servers for just a second. That's not the reason Esports Arena died. That was just XF coming through and putting on some big damage. Nocturnal with his two shots left and his Kraber finding some extra kills. That time onto, I believe, Rakanishi. And with them racking up even more KP, the Kraber now out of shots, so it could be their undoing. But in the meantime, looking at that kill feed, Vizio are suffering. And it's not just at the hands of one squad, it's at the hands of two. Nerf and G2 collaborating as, uh, unfortunately, the push down from the high ground outside of Epicenter looks like it is hurting more than it is helping. Nerf end up picking up the rest of G2, though, and with Fury going down... We're still, there we go. I was waiting on the last member of Team Vizio. They're out, G2 are gone, and it is a rough time to be a fan of either of those squads, but a great time to be an Xset fan as they're going on yet another push. Klain, very, very audacious on this Crypto, having very little data on the bridge right now, just walks across the lava anyways, eats the damage, and says, nope, this is mine, and nobody is gonna punish me for this. Never seen anyone so excited to slide inside of the lava bar. And it's a bad situation for anyone that's a slow reader because that kill feed just started to light up overall. It was really hard to keep track of exactly which teams were involved in what fight. But one thing's for sure, Broholz, you can see the reason why he was picked up on this team. He loves to skirmish, he loves to scrap. Not only that, the tracking and just the fearless approach to these fights is exactly what TSM needed. And they are going to bully their way inside of another safe building over here. Making their way from that top of epicenter into a safe haven is big time plays. And now they're going to be rewarded 
with some serious loot. Alternator, flatline, red armor, plenty of loot to have as well. Knights has been having themselves a day. Loses out on one of their players, but they do have a Sura with that kill lead. As you can see, CLG with their best performance so far. They've had themselves a slow day as well. Ghost, six, picking a knockdown and a flush coming in from Complexity, too. This kill feed is just starting to go bonkers. Yeah, they walk over, take a few away from C9. Noble with white armors right now must have respawned Rack and Ishu, but at the moment, they are not concerned about that as much as they are getting him a little bit more loot, cl loot cleaning up nights as they try desperately to exit Epicenter. Noble now have their pick of the litter when it comes to weaponry, and Rack and Ishu can go in and try and make the most of that. Doesn't quite have the safety on this Valkyrie just yet, though, and is trying to play with the rest of his team, not risk anything. Well, TSM are taking big risks everywhere. This dome has gone down right on top of them, but they can't be shot at, and they aren't taking any damage in the meantime either, completely controlling this fight. Verholst is going to be able to throw damage in from above, but a very nice portal will take this squad to safety. Now TSM's dome is down, though. They're taking this fight in the large on the big screen. Reps ends up going down. All motion complexity could be gone here. Monsoon is playing the knockdown shields, and even still, he's alive. Take a look at that kill feed as it lights up with the rest of complexity. TSM get to move on and Noble finally got the loot they were looking for both these squads in the top five We know that reps was knocked, but was he flushed throughout all of that madness coming around the corner from ghost gaming? We'll see if six is gonna be able to answer that one Panders is back into the game as well Al still alive, but just a sliver of HP has some armor left But that's not gonna mean much as he gets taken out by the rest of the CLG squad That one's gonna be Vatro coming through and possibly getting the res right there on to Nana You know that there's a handful of armor swaps in there gold bags gonna help as well so he's not gonna have to immediately be worried about the third party that's gonna come in because you can see from the player outlines ghost is there noble is there we have one rat i believe somewhere along these lines but it is clg without their full squad too so mathematically not quite sure what we're looking at here but we definitely know that ghost gaming and noble have had themselves a game so far if only Razor and CLG could team up, they could form that full squad. And hey, with Ghost exposing their backs to the last member of Razor, they might just be able to. CLG on the high ground can play this super patiently. And right now, it's a war between Ghost and Noble that everybody is waiting for the results on, hoping that they can third party. Ghost, I believe, have spotted that one right behind them, though. And Team Razor should be going down shortly. A few shots off in the distance, ultimately take down Dressov. And now, it's Ghost, CLG, and Noble left here, and maybe not CLG for too long. Batro goes down, Nano follows him. It's a 3v3, Ghost and Noble. Now is the time to decide. Dome goes down. Double will buy Ghost a little bit of safety, but it's a pretty early one on this high ground. Now they don't have it in defense from the defensive bombardment. Continuing to throw shots into this low ground, though. The 3v3 is in their favor as two big Peacekeeper shots connect from Madness, taking down to Lucas. And here, it's a matter of cleaning up. The numbers advantage is in the favor of Ghost, and they will indeed mix Spectres of Noble, sending themselves to a win. That was so clean, and you could see the reason why the bubble was thrown down. Yes, it wasn't a defensive bubble. That was an aggressive offensive bubble. That was so they could own a little bit more real estate, advance further, and then they used the enemy bubble to separate themselves from the rest of the players. But that is why Madness is on this team, especially on Wraith as an entry fragger, coming through with massive PK shots. You could see just flicking all over the place, just extremely well seasoned in the way that he wants to go about and approach these bubble fights. And now when you add him with six, who's another very well mechanically gifted player, you have themselves a really strong squad. So it's not surprising to see Ghost Gaming do so well today. And I'm loving this new squad. There's a big wealth of experience in our top two as well. Noble have been around the scene for so long. It's been such a consistent presence. They're going to the playoffs as well. And with Ghost able to take that win against them, I'm sure that it's easing up a little bit of the pain they felt at the end of the season. Very clearly a talented squad not to be messed with. And we'll find out how many points that game got them after we take a short break.
Hey everyone, Yeso Claus here to wish you a very happy holidays. We here at Esports Arena are definitely getting into the spirit of the season. And it all starts off with the 12 days of Gamesmith. Kicking off on December 2nd and running all the way through December 19th, we'll have tournaments going on for a range of awesome titles, including Apex Legends, Smash Ultimate, Halo Infinite, and more. The awesome part is, is you can earn points throughout the entire event. Now you get points by participating in tournaments, placing high in said tournaments as well, and if you come and donate canned food or toys for Toys for Tots. We've also got some awesome Esports Arena merch bundles going on all throughout the month of December. So if you're looking for a stocking stuffer or a present for that gamer and your family, make sure to check those out and pick one up. If you need any further information about Gamesmas and what we've got going on, head over to matcharino.com forward slash ESA today and come and spend your holidays with us here at Esports Arena. Now, even the biggest headaches are toast. Excedrin keeps your head in the game. Or no more throbbing noggins. Excedrin, game over for headaches. Fruit, refreshing, refreshingly sweet. But without sugar, zero calorie treat. They're all our top top of the Excedrin Splash. It's fruit freshing. Five games down and just one more to go, ladies and gentlemen. Goes Gaming with a big victory there in Game 5. They jumped to the top of our Mobile One leaderboard at halftime, but haven't even won a game yet. So a strong showing from the squad through the first half, and now putting that win under their belt will have them feeling really good with just one game left on the day. Let's check out our next player of the game here as we just have Game 6 ahead of us. And it's going to go to I'm Madness, the new addition to this Ghost Gaming squad. Four kills and an assist and over 1,400 damage there. You heard Tom talking about it. Having Madness as a new addition to this team, playing on the Wraith, being able to entry frag for the squad just gives them so much more firepower, and it certainly showed here in game number five. So well played from Madness and the entire Ghost squad this time around. They'll be looking to keep Esports Arena and a couple of other squads at bay with just one game left ahead of them, but they're going to be feeling really comfortable, I would imagine, at the top of that Mobile One leaderboard when we go back to Tom and Dia. Do want to remind you guys, I was talking about going out to our locations. And if you do this weekend, we have an awesome Oculus activation going on. If you guys want to go out and try out the brand new Oculus Quest, you can. So hit exclamation point locations in Twitch chat and you can find an esports arena near you. And we'll look forward to seeing you this weekend. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, Tom and Dia will get you ready for the final game of the day. All right, 
Tom. We're about to jump into the last game of the day, the sixth game, the one that is for all the marbles and the teams in the top five, I'm sure perhaps even top seven, will be clamoring for that number one spot. We haven't got a partner team taking a win yet today, though, and that's my mini goal for us to wrap up Intel Week. I want to see if we can get these partner squads going early on in the season, because later things get iffy, but for right now, I think it's some of the best shots to show that you have a high ceiling is to start collecting some wins. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, one thing's for sure, Team Esports Arena is winning. They've got two out of the five games under their True. belt. And that I don't know if we count them as a partner team, right? Because they were in the previous season, and now they're looking like one of the strongest teams that we have, not just in North America, but all of the world. And it's been really fun to watch them kind of methodically go about situations. But you have... Two tournament winners with Madness and Six. Madness is a multi-tournament winner. Six won his with Bowser and with uh, Nicewig back in the day and a couple of seasons and tournaments ago as well. So there is a lot of experience on this Ghost Gaming team, and they definitely are going to be forced to be reckoned with going forward after winning game number five. Yeah, that was a really amazing performance. We're going to check in with that sweet, sweet Mobile One leaderboard to see exactly how far it's gotten them. And hey, it's taken them all the way up to first place. Xset and Ghost at the very top right now is I don't think something that many would have predicted coming into today. But for two rosters that are definitely on the come up, this is looking good. No doubt about it, if we had predictions going forward that this would have been a complete shock to everybody you would say you know you look at tsm you look at c9 teams like complexity esports arena those are the teams that really stand out g2 for example and g2 sitting in 18th place as we take a look at the mobile one high performance moment from game number five there's a lot of different moments that were awesome but it's hard to say exactly what that one was and it looks like we're going to go with that final moment of how ghost gaming completely wipes noble off the face of world's edge Madness just popping off right there. Eliminating one person in an endgame fight is so ridiculously important. The speed with which Madness did it ultimately decided so much of this. Noble, yes, they had a hard position, but there are so many scenarios in which they're able to win. The PK shots and the confidence from Madness really, really sealed the deal and made this such an impressive game for Ghost. Now, within touching distance of that top spot, they've got one more game to do it, and I can't wait to see what sort of stuff they pull out. It's them and also Exit, who have been showing up the past two games like nobody's business. No doubt about it. The last two games have been phenomenal for Exit. And it's surprising because they're coming through with a pretty unorthodox comp composition, too. And they're doing it really, really come just a team effort you know right everyone's coming mm -hmm. through and playing shoulder to shoulder you're not seeing anyone really pop off individually and we're seeing them just play as a unit and it's hard to determine what their play style really is because we haven't seen much of exa we haven't really seen much success from exa but something's happened something's clicked whether that's you know the playoffs coming around the corner whether they made it or not i don't think they were, they were a team that made it in and if that's the case, it could be a chip on their shoulder that they're playing with. And a lot of times that's that extra motivation that you need. Esports Arena is playing with a chip on their shoulder. TSM is playing with a chip on their shoulder. Ghost, because of the new roster too. So whether it's the honeymoon phase that they're in or whether this team is the real deal remains to be seen. But they are back over towards their tried and true landing spot that CLG used to rock. And that is over towards Skyhook. Oh, CLG having such a rough day as well. They have just been jumping from place to place, and it seems like, at least for now, they've found some sort of stability in the middle of today. But now all that's going to be shaken up as we're getting an entirely new zone. We're pulling all the way into the west, and this one is going to be jumping right around where we know Razor like to land, where CLG have found their new home, where Exedrin are just off to the south of, and of course, where Vizio make their landing spot known. Landslide is going to be a big point to control, especially with the high ground being so valuable in these open circles. Looking at this zone, it's the former Mirage Voyage zone, right? It's going to pull over towards that hot spring area. So the teams that go and set up down there are going to have a great vantage point. But the best spot would be above the zip line on the platform, sometimes where a beacon, a beacon is, excuse me. And that's very, very close to where Excedrin is. They are just a couple of hundred meters away from being in one of the best positions in this game. We'll see if they are going to play it that way. We've seen some weird things like out of complexity, avoiding taking the God spot. 
And that's tough because we've seen how tough these lobbies are in terms of third parties, in terms of teams that are playing the edge. And we've had different paces for each game. In game number four, a lot of teams died to start with. In game number five, virtually no one died to begin with. We'll find out what game six has in store for us as we get this one underway. But Splash looks like they're the first team to go and fight. And why not? They are trying to get us uh, idea of where this next zone is going to be. They're trying to hit this scan. Phoenix is very close to being able to do so, but they need Dracos there and they need the bubble ASAP. Yeah, and, and with that bubble going down, if they want to try and get this scan right now, would come quite a bit of vulnerability as well, because you know that such an important cooldown, especially on your Gibraltar, isn't going to be available. It's keeping Splash from being able to get information, and right now, it seems like Dracos, at the very least, wants to try and peel off of this. It may not be worth it to risk going down in 20th place, and at this point, with Dracos getting chunked out, that's just seeming more and more likely. We've got yet another squad trying to roam over here. Team Razor has have popped in to see if they can collect some kills. That's such a grief that they haven't gotten the scan yet because that's the first thing that they should have done. They should already be looted and rotating out about a minute ago. Now they're struggling over towards Lava Fisher. The timing from all these other teams is so on point that, in my opinion, Splash's game is halfway over at this point. They all have great armors. The loot doesn't look that good. They don't have information on where the zone's going to be. And CLG is just griefing their game right now. And they're trying to do exactly the same thing, get the read on that zone. But with, this, with the ground to cover that they have so far, it's going to be a tall order. I like that Vatro, at the very least, is sitting out here, getting a little bit more cover and vision, especially through these glass walls that cannot be shot through on the top of the building. But it will mean that CLG, at the same time, are definitely suffering in that department complexity. End up losing a member to TSM. And that's at a very odd rotate. TSM... I don't think would have gone too far north, so it must be Complexity that ended up dipping into Fragment very early on, and now maybe finished off for it. Hal is running up on this, drops that portal, and you do not get to escape today. Shot out of the sky, Monsoon goes down, and Complexity are our squad out in 20th place. Yeah, Complexity took an early rotation in. They didn't expect so many teams to be collapsing in that vicinity. And then TSM has been doing what they've been doing the last couple games, rotating from Fragment East on over to Fragment West, no matter where the zone's going to be. And this makes a little bit more sense to go over here this time because it's moving towards where the end circle is going to be. But they've been doing it more or less just to craft. And meanwhile, Xset finds themselves in a skirmish, but they lose out on Kenny. That's going to be big for our teams fighting for first place. Yeah, with now Vizio having wiped Xset, the team that was gathering so much momentum inside these games, uh, now have found themselves uh, cut out early. Pony finally manages to finish off the kill on Klain, but Scissors ends up going down as well as Razor involving themselves in yet another skirmish. This is one of the most active games for Razor that we've seen so far. Godspot that you called out earlier, though, for Exedrin has been taken. It's going to be really nice for them because not just the possibility of the beacon, but the guarantee of that high ground that you saw Kim Chi Lee trying to climb right there is the thing that really determines how hard you are to push in the any, really, any stage of the game. And really great job by our observer teams to go and hop into the priority spots right now. We can see Excedrin blocking down that god spot like you were talking about. G2 trying to get rid of them on top of that god spot because that's the rotation over towards Thermal Station. And then you have a team like Renegades who has already won a game today over towards the bottom of Hot Springs. So these are the teams that have really done a great job of getting into position. What a ballsy play Design Fool's looking for. Defensive environment goes down. The bubble's there. You do have that arc star to go and work around. It does take a little bit of sliver of damage off. But look at Gentrifying. He's so interested in it. pushing this. And Design Fool's going for it as well. I can't believe the Design Fool is walking up like this, but it may not be spotted. Excedrin seem to be in shambles right now as they jump down to the low ground here. They have been pushed off by G2, and they don't end up getting that knock. A scan, not quite enough from enemy to let them finish this. Third party. G2 look like they were in the best position, but like you say, Lazarus coming up behind them makes short work of the remainder and ends up pushing us down to just 18 squads. Now with Valkyrie, they pop up pop back up, but Exedrin are waiting for them, and Dank is going to have to be very, very careful about how he plays this, because the rest of his team cannot get up nearly as easily by using something like that Ash. 
That was just frustration coming in from G2, not having the performance that they were hoping for. A little bit sloppy in the execution as well. Looks like they were just ready to go again and say, hey, if we don't win this fight, if we don't go and just have a phenomenal game, there's really no reason that we should even be playing. And I like that thought process, right? Full send it on there, go and see how it goes. But at a certain point, you got to realize you are getting a little bit desperate over here. You know the enemy team doesn't have their bubble, but they do have their defensive bombardment. That's exactly what happened. The bombardment just eating them alive. If the third party didn't come in, I feel like they could have potentially won that fight, which would have been really nice for them to go and take the game-winning spot. But now they're down gentrifying, and it's going to be tough to win this in a two-on three on three scenario yes they do have the god spot but the problem is is how are you going to go and get that res you don't have the wraith to go and try to portal down there you have results with the dome but it's going to be so many teams waiting in that vicinity to try to collapse and remember the renegades are right below them so his designful drops down he very well may die lazarus on the chase right now aren't going to find those knocked but interestingly enough neither are renegades on that low ground g2 sitting right underneath them Nobody's going to poke their heads out just yet. Renegades inside of this building know what's going on, but can't do much about it. Instead, on the other side, Saucerer is the one that ends up with the Rampage, finishing off Resulta, and in comes again Team Razor on another third party to finish off the job. It was just a matter of time. They sensed something was up. Also, when teams are paying attention to the kill feed and the numbers that are going on, they understand the situation. Malice looking like he's going to toss that Nox gas grenade in the window to buy time to go for the loop. I like that play. They may even want a dome here. There it is. Malice, hop in, buddy. Oh, man. Such a risky play to avoid going into the dome. There's the dome if you want it, Malice. Hop in there and heal up, buddy. I mean, thank God that he's able to have not just the safety of his gas, but that as well, because that was a juicy, ripe push in the making. As it is, Team Razor get to survive. Lazarus right above them, but the zone has started wow, to pull, pull away, and these guys don't know it yet. Remember, there's no beacon on that high ground. None of the squads inside of Hot Springs know what's going on. So once we hit this next ring, expect to see especially teams like Lazarus trying to make their way around, maybe pushing teams like Excedrin, who lie just off their east. That's what makes Apex so difficult. This is one of the more unpredictable zone pulls that we've seen. And this is going to be the most unforgiving because you are basically at the bottom of the map here at Hot Springs. There is nothing that you can do besides hit that geyser or try to bubble redeploy into a separate spot. But this looks like it's going to go on over towards the lava fissure side. So good luck to teams like you said, Razor, Renegades. If you have an R in your name, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's, it seems like it seems like that is the pattern for today and well renegades s still do not know what awaits them we've at least got a little bit of time to take a look over here at landslide we talked about the high ground in these open zones being really important and tsm well they are also outside of the ring seem to have found a squad to bully while they wait verholst up on this high ground Again, still on that Bloodhound, is finding flesh damage on the backside of this, and as you try and escape the RV, you may just go down. A little bit more damage connecting, Dome gets forced, and TSM are going to be on the push right now, trying to punish this rotation into staging with Imperial Howl getting cracked, though. They're going to have to rethink that real quick. 20s on top of 20s over here is Hal ate so much damage, I'm not sure what he even was hit with it looked like it was an automatic weapon but Vaxxon gonna get a knock right there as Renegades and Razor realizing that the zone is gonna be moving so they're starting to duke it out and clear out their backs it looks like Vaxxon and Renegades gonna get the better of Razor throughout all of this meanwhile TSN popping in the crafting station anyone need more batteries for holster you already have six I'm not quite sure what else to do and let's, let's not forget Lazarus were right above oh, this so what a Renegades great. end up finding that wipe uh, Oy, oy, oy. They do at least lose one. Pow Pow going to be a very difficult res right outside as well, especially because they don't have a Gibraltar to actually make this a lot safer with something like a dome. They're taking shots at the high ground, though, and if they're going to go for this, they've got to go for it now. Yeah, the thing is, is the portal will be pretty useful in this situation. Mm. So if they can get it, and keep, keep in mind, you used to jump out without any armor, too. So now that the updates over a couple of seasons ago allow you to have gray armor off of the rip that's a very big deal because there is virtually no ever coming back from a res uh, in these type of lobbies when you were rocking no armor at all but lazarus gets a little bit too greedy throughout all this and 
Maybe Dank's gonna be do donating his loot on over to Pop. And it looks like he will. Dank just a little bit too cheeky on that Valkyrie. We talked about how much safety she has, but in cases like this, it just doesn't matter. It's the same situation as when you're playing solo and all of a sudden your Wraith goes a little bit too far forward. You just can't get them up. You can't do anything to help them. And now Lazarus found that find themselves down a member at one of those crucial points in the game. Well, Esports Arena, meanwhile, are playing a very, very strange spot off the south of Lava Fisher. Not many teams enjoy playing that. I don't think Esports Arena are either, but Nerf are definitely enjoying this fight as they take one over here, taking down some more members of Exedrin. They're not entirely out yet, but things are getting real risky for the squad, especially with the bubble thrown down, keeping Messiah alive, unbeknownst to him, and fearing live, taken back to the front lines, taken out enemy, and looking for Kinshi Lee to finish off the trifecta. Really nice job there from Nerf. Meanwhile, Duplex got a knock in the kill feed too, so Esports Arena, who was getting hit with multiple defensive bombardments and looked like they were on the ropes on the side of this yellow pipe area, come back out swinging. And it reminds me of what they were doing in game number four, hiding behind this little safe haven area, trying to survive as long as possible. Teams think that they have them weak, but they've done such a good job of resetting that they surprise you and they peek back out at the right time. How are they doing that? Well-placed staggers with the bubble, with the barrels as well, making sure that they're not using their utility on top of one another so they can go and buy an extra time. And they've been in this situation before. They didn't panic. They had, I believe, complexity all over them beforehand. And now they're just gonna continue to buy time Try to figure out how they're going to get out of this situation. The beauty is, is if they want to go for a bubble redeploy, they can go and do so. However, I think that they're going to be A-OK -okay just sitting here. That's why the barrels are coming out, and that's why they're just playing it safe the entire time. I gotta tell you, I, T squared. I wish Rampart was good because we're seeing we're seeing those. Uh, you, we've people have talked about this before, especially with caustic barrels. That they are such good cover. That's exactly what it's being used for right now. But the knights, in the meantime, aren't so much using that defense as much as they are offense inside of this dome and inside of Lava Fisher. Trying to get a little something something going while well, above them nerf will try and fly in. We'll see if this gets punished. They haven't dropped a member just yet, but things get really dicey for them down on this low ground. And Fearing is eating a lot of damage from the lava as well. Seems like nerf for now will survive, but a very risky rotation and no clear way out means that things even in the mid game aren't going to get very difficult for them. Never a good spot when you're stuck on this low ground. We take a look at where the zone's going to pull. And again, so unpredictable on where this one's going to go. You never would think over towards Lava Fisher. But meanwhile, Knights, they're trying to get more onto this leaderboard as they're going to finish nice. off Splash. Clean shots there. Look how much damage they took. They only took 50 damage, less than 50 damage to wipe out the entire Splash squad. Lazarus is going to get ringed on, I guess you can say, as Z Davis is going to fight the dust. The ring is going to come and tick him away. Zone number three and zone number four really start to rip you. A new one is we are back on board with the esports arena, desperately trying to survive as Team Liquid's been putting the pressure on him over towards the side in the kill feed. Madness from Ghost Gaming going to find a knock. Stay naughty and now Brulili going to combine from C9 onto the nerf squ squad as well. And zone number four is where we see a lot of death. Knights are around. C9 have to be careful. And like you say, a minute, 10 seconds left to do this. Zach on the Valkyrie could try and drop down to finish off this kill, but I think much like them, I'm calling that it's not so worth it, especially given the amount of exposure that you would incur with Knights right next door. We have to see if this rat cam pays off later on. Renegades are finding Nox, though, and this is once again on to Vizio, who have yet to find success today. If a partner squad was going to find a win it was going to be them but it doesn't look like they are going to get the chance renegades clear them out as we've got a rat being swiped away no more nerf for us very soon it might be no more Vizio. might be no more tsm hal is low and they're playing around this car so 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 scarily first does come in and shield swaps will be available noble look like they're biting the dust today they got two players from Noble down. They flushed him as well. How is he going to be able to heal up? But it's going to be a slow heal with the syringes. You can see where the portal came in from TSM on that train car all the way over towards the edge. That happened about 45 seconds ago because the portal will disappear right at that 30% time. But here it is. Zone starting to close over here. And Reps is looting instead of worrying about where the team is going to go and push up because Hal and Verholz already have that covered. And now he's going to catch right back on up to his team so they can put it into the zone.
You know, Rep Reps is such a good player, and he plays in such a different way than than anyone else. I mean, on the Gibraltar, it is really important to be able to be supportive, but knowing exactly what his responsibility is there ends up meaning that his team can rotate confidently, much like C9 could and uh, can absorb pushes from others. It seems like the Knights may not be having the best time right now. However, it is coming down to a 50-50 at the moment with a 2v2 in the making. You do end up losing Zach and with just Abrelaley left on this Gibraltar defensive bombardment. Cannot even be thrown down before he's taken to 25 HP. CLG are coming in for the third party. 100 Thieves are around as well. So many squads are piling up in Lava Fisher. This is the chaos that you called, Tom. Anmu gets split from the team. Scurry gets dropped as well. That's going to be 100 Thieves going out. Vize goes out as well to Panders. And that is just demotion, just demolition all over the map so far. Ghost Gaming throughout all this chaos is remaining as cool as possible. Panders has a scan for him as soon as he goes and reloads that as well. Madness hitting a portal on over towards the roof. If he can clamber up, then he's going to be blocking that door here very shortly. Maybe even going for a kidnap. Looks like he was trying to, does actually it. get one on CLG to pull that off. After the difficulty there, looks like it was very much worth it as CLG now can be dismantled. We do have a member of Ghost falling though, and that's to the very last member of C9. So Rez is going to come in and Penders has to pull back as weirdly enough, Abrilaley ends up saving the lives of CLG, at least for now. Portal gets taken, Ghosts are back up to, towards the high ground, but Panders is on the hunt for the last member of C9 and ends up finding him with a very nice clean laser from the R99. Esports Arena, who were running, running low on Econ earlier, end up getting wiped out by TL, but with no dome here, do they even have time to reset, or are they going to be taken out at the same time? There's so much fighting on the other side. Renegades may be able to throw in the damage from the low ground, and TSM waiting on the third party could make use of this chaos themselves. Yeah, don't count TSM out quite yet. Yes, Ghost is looking pretty solid overall, but what a job by Ugly staying alive for that long, and it was only a matter of time before Team Liquid got Esports Arena's number. They were just haunting them for so long the entire time. But this is the building, that the priority building that you really want to lock down. You're going to see so many teams coexisting here. One team's going to be the, on the inside, one team's going to be on the outside, and you may even see two teams on each side of the outside. So you're going to have four, three or four teams just rocking next to each other on top of that little building as Renegades gets the knock right there onto fun. You can see they are looking fairly healthy in a good position as well. All the action gonna be directly in front of them. And then TSM looks like they wanna now start Whoa. to push up as they see an opportunity to go and try to get some blood. That's gonna be on the Renegade squad as well. Hal takes the portal back. They may need a, a bubble to go and heal the battery, but it looks like it's not gonna be needed because Reps is there with the beam. And as they take this one back, it is just to finish people off, just to get these last couple flushes. TSM take out two members of Renegades, leaving us with a rat, and I believe we've got another one as well. Intel, though, have taken their spot, and that is the cost of the play. No more safety, no more high ground for you. We'll have to worry if they end up being able to hold on to it, though, as Cody did take quite a bit of damage directly to the face. But now that they've got it, Intel would be remiss to give this one up. Uh, with controlling TSM, they can spot them out on the train tracks, get spotted right back by that scan. Should be able to keep control of this lobby portal just now, supposed to expire. But it seems like despite that, TSM have made their way back up on top, but Reps isn't here just yet. There we go. That's the power of the Bloodhound scan. Verholst is going to get that information. That decides that they're going to go and push up on the roof instead of portaling back through because they knew it was being watched and avoiding any caustic traps. They're going to go and just foot it from across the train tracks and get in. Meanwhile, Ghost Gaming was playing the low ground. Lava Fisher, they are going to be rewarded with some kills along the way. Somehow hitting that player through the little crack inside of the bubble, but that player will go and hit the portal. Ghost Gaming and TSM. Two teams on that left-hand side of the leaderboard. It's really going to come down to these two squads to see who's going to win it. I really like these excels up here. Verholtz knows that these scans would mean the world to TSM, and that's why they're pumping that in. Instead of into the defensive bombardment, TSM are using instead the 
cover of defensive environment to give them a little bit more safety as the ring is slowly but surely going to push them out of the high ground. They spot Ghost on the low ground though, and with Intel right below them, you can't afford to focus here. Ult finally gets popped from Verholst, and a dome off to the outside will give TSM time to evaluate the situation and see who they want to take on first. The remainder of CLG seems to be the priority as up on the high ground, Imperial Hal throws down the focus with the members of Ghost falling to Intel TSM wow. receive a defensive bombardment at the worst possible time. We're down to the top three. TL going out now, but with Intel still around, they're trying to roll up, take on TSM, and find potentially their win. Intel may just be our first partner squad to win a game because they've only got two more members to do it. It is their week, it is their day, and Intel, it is their their game as the ring closes in. Cody thinks about dropping, but Moody is the one to full send it here. Finishing off the game, finishing off that last couple squads. Intel take that win and are our first partnered squad to find that victory on a pro night. And during Intel week as well, what a way to end that one on our pro day. You love to see it. Hey, you, you achievement unlocked there. You got your win there with Team Intel, but let's talk about how they were able to execute that. They were the last team to put their dome down, and that's always really key in these situations. Because TSM put their dome down about two seconds early, they were able to counter that with a defensive environment on the Intel side, but also the presence of mind after they were able to, we have to talk about the shots that happened onto Hal too from Mooney coming in with the wingman. That was really impressive. But I love the idea of keeping two people in the final circle and then dropping one player down just to get those extra kill points because you never really know how many points you're going to really need to move up in that leaderboard. Maybe you get into the cash. Maybe it pushes you ahead of another team that is our partner team so you can avoid relegation and continue to pop up on that list for our cumulative leaderboard down the road. That was just a really well-timed push coming from Intel outside of the building, and you really got to give credit for that Gibby bubble going down late. Yeah, so impressive to see. And let's let's keep in mind as well that Intel are a team that is about to come up from the challenger circuit. They've been competing in that the whole time and have just gotten themselves to the point where they can fight inside of the preseason qualifiers. This bodes extremely well if they're able to take games against squads of this caliber. But to find out, of course, how many points it netted them, we're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back with our Mobile One leaderboards. games done and what a way to finish intel week here with team intel grabbing a victory in the final game of pro night well played from the squad as they start off their series e journey let's check out our final player of the game here for today and definitely look forward to more series e tomorrow night though of a different caliber we're gonna have guilty gear strive tomorrow so don't miss out on that but to finish off apex here it's gonna be mooney grabbing Player of the game here for game number six. Five kills and almost a thousand damage there on the Wraith. Intel, one of the strongest partnered squads coming into this season. They were really good in the qualifiers and they're looking to do some damage here this time around. So loving seeing these partnered squads 
get some big W's here in the first week. Obviously, we saw four from Team Vizio last night and one here from Intel. Well played from them. But we still have to tally up the results here and check out our Mobile One leaderboard. Do want to remind you one more time, check out that giveaway, exclamation point giveaway to get that awesome Intel swag pack. But I'm going to hand it back over to Dia and Tom, and we'll keep it rolling to close out the show. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Eat, Speak, Compete. Eat, Speak, Compete. Yes. Name, incredible, logo, even better. So I'm your host, as always, Yeso, joined by my co-host, Luke Shimoni. Brew. There's a lot to unpack there. I don't even know where to start. If one of the North American teams doesn't win, their 2021 season is done. I got my fingers crossed. I yeah. think you got this. Uh, let's turn yeah, same, bro. Let's turn more towards uh, the competitive side. Uh, I, they finished sure strong. Like 35 and 2. They finished and then, strong. They they look... The only intent is, hey, let's make this game as esports as possible. Then sure, but that's never going to be what Nintendo does. Uh, and I'm very curious to see what kind of their first take on what a Valorant World Championship should look like. Dang. That's super fun sounding. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> that sounds gonna super be fun. fun. I think that's like a little fun. What was that Yeso said? A exclamation point giveaway? Because I am certainly an Intel fan after that win. Perfect timing. Excellently played by them. You talked about the headshots with the wingman that came in clutch and everything about the way that Intel managed to play that end zone was really immaculate. Now, let's take a look at how many points it netted them. Mobile one leaderboard. Last one of the day. Here we go. Up until where did Intel make it? Wow. Second place. Not bad. And that's what's key again is dropping down and getting those extra kills because you don't know where you were going to stand in that overall leaderboard. Maybe you could have took first. Maybe you could have took you know second or third. But one thing's for sure, Intel came in at the right moment there. The timing couldn't be better. The execution couldn't be better. The shots. And like you said, from a team coming up in the Challenger League to play in the most stacked lobby in all of Apex just goes to show you. And it goes to show you too how competitive this lobby is when you have a team like G2 who is winning this weekend during the ALGS, comes through and gets 20th place. They are one heck of a team. I'm expecting them to bounce back next week. Yeah, I mean, let, let's not forget, like, we've got so many squads that we know are extraordinarily talented. 100 Thieves, for example, picking up three wins in the Pro League. Again, bottom half of the leaderboard right now with Team Intel, a partnered squad, getting second place. Man, I am so happy. And Ghost coming up here as well. But let's take a look at the Mobile One high performance moment from last game because there were so many of them to take a look at. And it really is that end game fight with TSM starting it off. And then finally, we know Intel coming in to clean it up. <laughs> Just love these wingman shots. They were so crispy. 41, 45, 45 again. I mean, he hits about four out of five or six shots right there. Not easy to do when you're going up against Hal, one of the movement gods that we hear, have here in Apex. But this is what I loved about the situation. They understand what's going on. They know that they can win by just sitting in the zone, but they're going to send players down to go and try to clean that up. They clean up the player on the ground. They get Panders out. They get the knock onto six. That is going to make, make sure that the zone kills six as well. That's two extra points that they wouldn't have had. They beat TSM by four overall. Yes, they had no idea exactly where the math stood when it was all said and done, but that just goes to show you where their thought process is. They're not satisfying. They're not satisfied just by sitting there and winning the game by letting the zone come out and kill them. They're trying to take it and push the advantage, and they took out the team that got first place overall, giving them second overall. Great job by Ghost, Intel, and TSM. And, and, yeah, really amazing stuff. And like you like you mentioned there with the points, trying to grab as many of them as you possibly can. These will continue to stack up for our partnered squads throughout the season. So you're going to get the chance to shake, check out some of those leaderboards as well as the weeks go on and on. That's going to be all from us, though. Congratulations once again to Ghost, Intel, and TSM, our top three. And Ghost, of course, is the winners most of all. I've been Dia. This has been T-Squared. And now we're back over to Yeso. Thank you, gentlemen. Much love and uh, appreciate getting to listen to you guys break it all down all throughout the night. Tons of great games, 
Tons of great calls from both of you. Congratulations once again, of course, to Ghost. They do grab first place on in the night with Team Intel and TSM following them up on the leaderboard. And of course, this is the former Season 2 Team Intel squad now with I'm Madness sliding in. And they're looking to be really strong and one of those contenders you should keep an eye on here in the near future. So love to see it. They had an incredible night here tonight and they come out on top. That's going to do it for the first week of Series E Apex Legends Season 4, but we will, be, we will be back once again next week, again Tuesday and Wednesday night with Open Night and Pro Night, so don't miss out on that. But as I mentioned earlier, Series E is not done for this week. We'll have our first week of Series E Guilty Gear Strive here tomorrow night right here at twitch.tv forward slash esports arena. So if you're looking for some of the most talented players in the FGC and especially in the Guilty Gear scene, we will have them all competing right here. So definitely look forward to that. But that's going to do it for us, folks. I hope you enjoyed the show. Have a great rest of your night for myself, the entire live broadcast crew, and everybody here at esports arena. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm throwing up cans, I'm betting you won't, please keep up making you dance, you know I'm the GOAT, champion squad, every time we go, this legend control, I'm climbing the top, no matter the toll, I climb to the top, no matter the toll, I'm throwing out cans, I'm betting you won't, please keep up making you dance, you know I'm the GOAT, champion squad, every time that we go, this legend control, I climb to the top, no matter the toll, I climb to the top, no matter the toll, Nobody slays like I slay. Nobody slays like I slay.